right, hello everyone and welcome here to beautiful Bungie HQ in scenic Bellevue, Washington. Uh, my name's Andy and I'm gonna be your host today and today we have the distinct opportunity to go ahead and show off some brand new stuff coming in Destiny 2 Into the Light. But fret not, I won't be the only one going ahead and telling you about it. I have joined by three members of the Destiny development team who we'll go ahead and introduce here right away. Starting directly to my left, Mr. Tom Farnsworth, how are you doing today? Great, thank you, Andy. I am uh, doing great. I had coffee Yeah. breakfast on the way here. I'm a little ready to go. I'm yeah. excited to share uh, all the great work the team has done yeah. uh, the, the past many months. And uh, just, just for context about me, yeah. I'm the, uh, the creative lead. Uh, into the light, and I'll be here with you the next few weeks to talk about it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff in store. And of course, we're joined by senior narrative designer, Mr. J Jerome Viernich. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Also had coffee. Nice. On the highway <laughs> while right. screaming at passing cars. So. Quite a drive in as well. And for yeah. the folks at home who may not know you as well as we've had the opportunity to, to, to learn about you over the past couple days, uh, who are you and what do you do here at Bungie? I am a senior narrative designer, which means if you hear a character say it, or if you read it on screen, one of us typed it into a tiny little box Excited. at some point months before. Hanging out with Excel lots these days? A absolutely. There it is. Tiny yeah. words, tiny boxes. That's me. <laughs> it's an important tool, obviously. Absolutely. And of course, last but very not least, one of the most deadly I've ever seen to rock the thumbsticks, especially in these past couple days, the one and only Mr. Noah Lee, activity designer here on Destiny 2. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah Lee. I'm an activity designer on Destiny 2 Into the Light. And I have the distinct pleasure of introducing us to Onslaught so we can see all the really cool things that we have in store. I'm a long time player. I've been playing since Destiny 1. And as a player turned dev, I'm excited to show off all the stuff we have planned. I'm just so excited to see what's awesome. Going. Well, hey, welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. To everyone in chat, I see a lot of activity in there as well. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today as well. But yes, today we're going to go ahead and kick things off by looking at Onslaught, which is a brand new activity coming in, coming in Destiny 2 into the light. Uh, for those of you out there that are Twit enjoyers that have had a chance to go ahead and see what we've been posting the last week, uh, we went ahead and released some key art last week that is now up on screen. You can see here. Uh, there's a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and just start. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about what Onslaught is? Yeah, so Onslaught is a new uh, three-player activity that, that, that's the, kind of the core of Into the Light. It's, a, uh, it's available to all players. Yeah. And you can kind of see in this, this key art, like this is a kind of aspirational view of what Onslaught is in game. Yeah. It's a, it's a new uh, wave defense uh, activity. Uh, it, it, it takes inspiration from a, you know, a lot of modes we, we, we've looked at, like in other games and our games yeah. through, throughout our kind of history. And you can see here, you're, you're in the last city. Yeah. And I, I'm really excited that, that our players are going to be able to, like, the Guardians are going to be able to hop into this space and, you know, defend the last city and, you know, eventually take the fight uh, to the Witnesses' forces here. And you can, you yeah. can kind of see, uh, like, you know, you've got our three Guardians. That they're kind of ringed in defenses. Yeah. You also got like the pyramids in the sky. That's right. Yeah. And there's even some like kind of pyramid terraforming going on in the background. In there. the city itself too. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And they the, are at the our city, doorstep. There's a few other locations too, but we'll, maybe we'll talk about later. Talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, also too, Jerome, we are. This is you know not the first time obviously we've ever had to go ahead and defend ourselves on our own turf, but never quite like this before. Our heels are dug in. We're in the last city right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on here? Absolutely. So for the past several seasons, the Forces of the Witness have been closing their vice grip mm -hmm. around the soul system. The Witness is inside the Traveler doing nefarious deeds, enacting the final shape. Right. Time is on its side. Yeah. We have worked with uh, ancient magics, esoteric rituals, yeah. bargaining with uh, our old foes in order to send someone through the portal and uh, establish a bridge, and we chose Crow. Yeah. Now, until he makes contact with us, we are back at home sharpening our knives. Yeah. Now, the witness, of course, will do everything that it can to keep us on this side of the portal. Understand. Which means unleashing every bit of its resources, every uh, part of its power against us to keep us pinned yeah. in the last city. Um, so this is about breaking out and uh, discovering new power, yeah. right? Sharpening ourselves, yeah. finalizing our builds, and getting some new toys so that we can face down the witness. That's right, and we're also getting some help from a tried and true sharpener of Guardians as well. Shax is gonna be helping us out as well, right? Absolutely. Where some see calamity, Shax sees opportunity. Yeah. And he is gonna be opening up his arsenal for us to uh, enjoy. I think we'll hear about that next week, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yep. uh, yeah, he'll be your vendor, and uh, I'm really excited for players to hear from him. Awesome. As someone who spends a lot of time in the Crucible, it's always good to spend more time with Shaxx. Inspirational, to say the least. Absolutely. Uh, and high volume. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's the best part of him. You just throw more grenades. 
Oh, reminder to everyone. Never go wrong. May, yeah. it, may it be a hint to us all. Uh, and of course, Noah, there's a lot also too going on here. I see turrets. I see other activity defenses. Uh, obviously, we're going to jump into some gameplay here. But before we do, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see when we dive in to play some Onslaught here live in just a bit? Yeah, of course. So something that's really cool about Onslaught compared to a lot of our activities in Destiny is, like Tom said, it's not an offensive, it's a defensive. Our goal is to defend the ADU, or advanced yeah. defense unit, which allows us to build our defenses like turrets, tripwires, decoys, and the main goal is to make sure that that thing stays up for all of your waves that you're fighting in. Yeah. And if that goes down at any point, regardless if you're on playlist, normal, or on legend difficulty, your game will end. So yeah. the main goal is to keep your defenses safe, build them up, upgrade them, and try to get as far as you can. Yeah. Legend difficulty. Interesting. Already dropping some hints. I like what I'm hearing. You know, I had to do it. And Obviously. another thing, just really quickly, yeah, is we had a lot of learnings from some of our activities in the seasons, like deep dives and the coil, where we know players like when we escalate difficulty over time. Yeah. So that's a key feature of Onslaught. You go from wave one to wave 50, each one, each 10, escalating in difficulty as we're going to see in gameplay. And that serves a really cool opportunity for players to test their builds yeah. and, you know, the, the waves of enemies that we're fighting against are the whetstone by which we are sharpening ourselves. Excellent. Yes, build crafters, you're on notice. Be prepared for what's to come. All right, well, I say there's no time like the present. We are seeing a lot of requests in chat for gameplay. I think we can go ahead and dive on in. Uh, the throne world. Noah, would you mind returning to your throne world briefly to go ahead and kick things off here? My tithes. Obviously, yeah, we got to get some tithes for the man himself. Uh, in the meantime, really quickly, obviously, with Onslaught being a brand new activity, we're going to kick things off in a very different way. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see when we go ahead and start things off? Yeah, you're going to see it in the gameplay here in just a second, but uh, Onslaught is about kind of establishing a defensive kind of like beachhead in these contested territories where we're like trying to, you know, claw space back from the witness. Certainly. And we're going to see it in Midtown here in a moment. Mm -hmm. And so players, you know, start off with you and two other maybe friends you, you've, you've found uh, uh, that, 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 that you, you play with all the time or maybe yeah. you match make you in with. And uh, you're going to uh, work, push forwards with Shax's Red Jacks yeah. that you're going to see here. You'll... Uh, establish a defensive area, you'll deploy the advanced defense unit, and you'll start placing defenses. Yeah. As Noah said, there's uh, there's turrets, there's trip mines, there's yeah. decoys. decoys. The decoys is our favorite little sweepy That's bot. That's right, yep. And, uh, Back to help once again. And you can you can upgrade those too. Like the, yeah. the way the activity works is you defeat enemies to collect scrap, yeah. which is our which is our, our, our currency, mm -hmm. and then you can spend that to deploy these defenses. And you're gonna have to be kind of selective. Like each of these defensive locations can can move around throughout the activity. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and oh, here we go. We oh, got, awesome. We already got some right here. Yes. So we're over here trying to create a foothold for our ADU, uh, supported by Shax's lovely Red Jacks. You know, we love, know and love them. Oh, and yeah. as soon as we've cleared out the Elixir that are here, or the Fallen, uh, our ADU's here. As we see, we got some batteries in tow. And this begins our first really interesting part of this activity, which is our purchase phase. Killing enemies will grant you scrap, like we see in the top left. And we have 30 seconds to pick one of a suite of upgrades. We have Trip wires that you can buy for a thousand, uh, decoy, which is our lovely sweeper bot here, and turrets. I know people are very curious about turrets, so I'm just going to buy this first. There we go. But we have uh, our lovely guests Clayton and Ashley, who have helped create this activity in our playtest team. They're yep. with me, helping fill out the fire team, and. Uh, they're building their defenses. It's always best to have some solid teammates. And also, too, uh, for the folks in chat noticing some weapons, uh, go ahead and, and just go ahead and observe everything you can possibly see on screen. Oh, it's okay. We, uh, we're going to have plenty of time to dig through those inventory screens. But in the meantime, yeah, chat is uh, connecting some dots with the things they may have seen in the key art. Uh, but also, too, so, Jerome, we're here, obviously, going ahead and doing this for a reason, right? The ADU is here for a purpose. Can you help us understand a little bit about the role that plays in the defense that we're mounting against the witness? Absolutely. Um when all of the Guardians and their allies enter the portal to face down the Witness, mm -hmm. Earth will be essentially undefended. Yeah. So it's important that we establish solid defenses now um, and claw back as much territory as we can in advance of our assault. I also want to just point out, uh, I know we're not going to be able to look at it and uh, we'll see the weapons next week, oh, yeah. but uh, we've got some beautiful new lore yeah. on those weapons. And so any of those lore hounds, make yeah. sure you check out those tabs. Yeah, it's, really uh, nice. we, we will be only uh, maybe looking at whatever happens to show up in the stream today, but yes, this is the, the Brave Arsenal, as it will be known. Players will get a chance to go ahead and be more intrinsically involved with this. We'll have more information on that in the coming weeks. But uh, yeah, for those out there that are observing maybe some some previous Guardian favorite weapons out there, uh, worry not. You'll have lots of information to learn over the next coming weeks. So yeah, I want to kind of get started on kind of what players have been seeing since we've been talking about Please, yeah, yeah. as a whole. Uh, as we're able to see, like, 
the ADU has a health over its head right here, and we have enemies in waves coming to try to defeat it. If you've been paying attention, we have high-value targets that are mini-bosses or elites called saboteurs, which drop uh, these repair batteries. And for other attempted players, we can see that there are champions involved. So, you know, bring your champion weapons. <laughs> Make sure that you are well uh, equipped for this. We have different waves and different augments like we're seeing on wave three yeah. that demand your immediate attention. Yep. We know Destiny players like to run and gun, so we try to get you out of the space of the ADU sometimes mm -hmm. so that you can kind of do those objectives to make sure that, oh yeah, I can explore Midtown and all these other spaces uh, when we have the other maps that you see. Yeah. Crucible enjoyers know this space pretty well. It'll be a chance for everyone to go ahead and check it out. But also too, actually, no, thank you Noah, for checking that out. Uh, obviously, the pyramids have been busy in here helping to go ahead and mount this offensive. Yeah, I think uh, they have an eye for decoration. Yeah, honestly, they're, and they're doing a great job. I gotta give them credit, they keep, they keep it consistent. Um, but Jerome, this is, these are pyramid ships in our own backyard that are gonna go ahead and just try and terraform the city, or can you help us learn what's going on here? Well. They don't have to do anything. I yeah. mean, the witness is doing what it wants to do, and if we don't yeah. stop it, then it's game over. Yeah. So they really just need to, to keep us pinned. Um, the witness is inevitable. There's no way we could kill, defeat every one of the witness's soldiers. Right. Uh, there's no way we could, you know, fight them one by one. We'll try. We have to, we have to deal with the witness head on yeah. inside the Traveler. Yeah. And uh, we'll do that soon. So also to, you know, obviously getting to go ahead and, and send players away from the ADU is pretty significant when it comes to accomplishing all of the tasks in front of you here in Onslaught. But uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about the defenses as well? Like we, I think we see some trip mines up already set and ready to go. Yeah, you, um, you can see the, the horizontal beams, those are trip mines. As you upgrade them, the colors will change. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do more damage and, and, and kind of fire off more Trip mines charges. get more charges. Uh, yep. And they get more in size. If you upgrade it, you'll go from one trip mine to Two, as we see here, which is really nice. I'm gonna keep going. And then we've also got the the turrets. No, if you could show off a turret in a second. Oh yeah. Uh, right those as well. They, they, they when, when you, oh, yeah. you can upgrade those three, three three levels as well. They change color. They they deal more damage. They get more health. Yeah. Uh, the fire rate increases actually also. Yep. And and then we've also got Sweepy Bot who do also those decoys uh, mostly just gain health and change uh, color a little bit. But the idea here is like each of these defensive locations, you're, you're, like we're gonna kind of randomly pick yeah. the defenses for you to deploy. And it's up to you kind of to make the best choices and use your limited resources, yeah. the scrap that you're collecting to, to, to make the best ch the choices there. Cause you're not gonna have all the currency you need right off the bat to like, you know, of to, course. deploy everything and upgrade yeah. everything. You're gonna have to be like, no, we want, maybe we want this turret or maybe, oh, they, they were, it seems like enemies are coming more from this direction. Maybe we should have these trip mines. Right, yeah. Let's focus our, our attention and abilities maybe in a different direction. Let the trip mines and turrets do some work in a different direction. Yeah. yeah. Something I want to bring up is we actually have a bonus objective going on right now. Okay. We have secondary objectives that occasionally appear uh, in waves. And this one is just to complete the wave within a certain amount of time. And if you complete that while you're defending the ADU, you got to make sure that's alive. You'll actually get a reward, which is a heavy ammo crate that will refill your ammo. When you get higher up in the waves and you get more difficult enemies and like larger waves of, of stuff, like that is definitely something you're gonna be trying to get. Yeah. And that kind of ties into the team coordination you can do. Like if you have a good team in the higher difficulties, uh, you're gonna need a little bit more coordination. You might need somebody to go out and do the augments and somebody to go out and do the critical objectives. Yeah, and also too, so just to make sure Tom as well, this isn't the only AD you are gonna be defending in this activity. It moves around the map. So, as Noah said earlier, there's 50 waves in yeah. our, our, our challenge version of this activity. Okay. Uh, so, uh, there's a playlist version, which is just one location. Mm -hmm. It's easy, quick, fun to hop into. You do 10 waves and you're done. And then there's the challenge version, which we're showing here. So, mm -hmm. there's uh, 50 waves or, or, or five sets of 10 waves, yes. uh, is how we like to talk about it. Mm. And uh, with each of those sets uh, of ways we move around the map between three different locations. Okay, got it. And so you'll you'll start at one ADU, you'll defend it, you'll take the fight to the witness for a little bit, you'll yeah. come back, and then you'll build up defenses more and then go fight a boss. Yeah, which is what we're seeing as well right now. Like, we're on board a pyramid ship now, right? Yeah, this is, a, this is one of my favorite phases uh, where instead of defending the ADU, we take the fight to them. And as you see, we cultivate a spark of light and it's time to run it down, destroy the witness's lieutenants and, you know, do a fun backflip. Let's hope I can you know, pull that off. <laughs> do the backflip. It's important. If you don't do the backflip, chat's gonna be very upset. I can already tell. Very. Here we go. Look at that. Here we go. Ooh! 
You make it look so easy, Noah. Because I'm just good. I just, <laughs> he is good. He's doing, he's doing pretty well. I, I'm not going to get it. Not going to. Also serious. on the first <laughs> set of waves. So. It's, it's going to get a little spicier later. The, yeah. the first few waves are, first, are, are you know, they're kind of like the training wheels. Right. Yeah. Because you were saying too, there's there's a uh, a ten wave version of this and a fifty. Was yes, it? Yes. There's yeah. a ten wave version That's called right. Onslaught Playlist. Okay. Uh, you know, if you're in for a, you want to be in for a short session, I think that's definitely the place for you. Onslaught, in our experience from playtesting, is really easy to lose track of time and just mm -hmm. kind of keep going. You're all, you, you can always be like, you know, just one more wave, a few more, you know, a few more sets, and then you're like, dang, it's been an hour. Like, it's actually crazy. <laughs> oh. yeah, Noah, yeah. I, got a, I got a question, if you yeah. don't mind. How do you decide whether to unlock new defenses or upgrade the ones you've already got? So it really is a risk reward thing. As we're seeing, like, when you upgrade defenses, they will exponentially increase in price which means that you have to make a decision every purchase phase, like do I want to save my money to potentially upgrade something down the line and also hope that that defense you know, lives long enough to be upgraded or am I just gonna bite the bullet and buy something now that can help me immediately. My strategy usually is that in the first few waves, I will not buy anything to like just save up for later and usually my teammates will do something. Yeah. That's where communication comes in. If you just do that by yourself, I don't think your teammates will be very happy with you. As always, keeping the comms crisp is very important, especially as you get those higher difficulty levels. Because, uh, yeah, we're just in the kind of the fledgling waves of this right now. But, yeah, when we were doing our playtest yesterday, things got crazy in a hurry. I hope we get to see uh, some more of the craziness we saw yesterday. But oh, I don't want to spoil anything for chat. Obviously, there's plenty to be discovered in this. Something I neglected to mention, which we've been doing yeah. this whole time, is uh, the ADU batteries will actually heal it. Kind of similar to, like, Forges in the Black Armory from my, my real vets out there. Um, <laughs> And the ADU, the enemies are naturally compelled to come over here and like attack it, they'll shoot it, they'll knife at it, but also if there's any enemies that stay in the radius of the ADU, you'll see it'll turn red yeah. and damage will start to tick. So that's when you need to throw your ADU batteries in there and you'll get scrap for that. But if your ADU's full on health, you'll actually get three times the amount of scrap. So it's in your best interest to try to keep it as healthy as possible because you might be able to snowball your defenses. Interesting. So especially if you're really pushing for those those later levels and then like the 40s and 50s, maybe it just behooves you to hold on. For the oh yeah. Levels are so let your abilities and weapons do the talking for a little bit. 50s are no joke. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> there we go. We got one of the bigger mobs on the so, way. So yeah, here's one of our augments. Uh, just demolitionists. We get these huge ultras that come in and just they're beeline for the ADU. Yeah. Since we're on the first wave, they're not that difficult, but I promise you, wave 40, wave 50, these guys are tanky. They require a lot of attention. And we'll give uh, some credit in making it look easy as well. Yeah, I'm, I, like I said, you know, I'm just that guy. <laughs> it's, it's been preparing for this moment. Uh, also, too, actually, let's talk a little bit of build crafting. What are you running right now, Noah? So I'm not, you know, I'm not treading new ground here. I'm a nice stalker by heart. I got my Falcons on. We actually, off screen, we're figuring out how it's pronounced. But your Falcons, everyone, so anyone who mispronounces it, that's how you say it. Um, doing that, I love Barry Bloodline. It's a great weapon uh, from you know, Warlord's Ruin. I love the Catalyst. And, you know, I'm just doing that because we might see some Tormentors, you know, who knows? Who knows? And I like precision when we're doing that because, you know, rockets aren't very effective. I can see over the past uh, day or so as we've been getting prepared for the stream, I'll admit my, my jealousy for Buried Bloodline has only been growing. I'm a big fan of Graviton Lance. We get along very well, but I gotta say the precision that you've been getting out of, of Buried Bloodline makes me uh, upset that I haven't just gone ahead and buckled down and gotten the farming done to get that thing unlocked, honestly. Yeah, great. So as we see, uh, we are actually in the pyramid again for the boss. We're taking the fight back to the witness's forces. And this brings up a really interesting part of all of the boss phases where instead of having immune shields or immune phases, we have different augmentations that allow you to increase your effectiveness against the boss. So for example, this one is augmentation well. If you stand in these wells and defeat high value targets, you will actually deal increased damage to the boss for the rest of the fight. That's something, because these are meant to be kind of like victory laps, like you've survived against the ADU, it is time to just you're single-mindedly take down the boss. Yeah. Also, too, actually, really quickly, Tom, so I know we, were just, we touched on there being uh, 10 and 50 wave versions, but um, we got a question in chat from, from Tyrkinator. Um, is it random matchmaking? Do you get to bring your own fire team in? Both? So playlist is random matchmaking, or you can bring your fire team in. Yeah. And then I, I believe the, the challenge modes, of which there was a normal version and like a, a hard version, which yeah. goes up to GM. Uh, I, I believe that the, the, the normal version is, is matchmade. 
Um, we can correct on socials maybe for the second one. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it's match made, but you, I, right. I think everything supports Fire Team Finder. Cool, awesome. Yeah, yeah obviously. Uh, and honestly, too, it, it never hurts to bring in your own GM crew if you're pushing 50 yeah. waves. No, uh, it, it, we, we definitely want you to communicate yeah. in, in that activity on the, on the upper end, especially. It's, you're you're going to have a much better time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Also, too, actually, while we're kind of on that subject, I remember something you mentioned earlier was, you know, kind of one of the goals, I think, from a design standpoint you were mentioning was that it's kind of just easy to get lost in this activity. You know, the combat sandbox that Destiny has, sometimes you just want to throw down and just test new builds, go crazy, and this is something that really seems to facilitate that. Yeah, you, you might even feel it on the stream here as we, we're going to go deeper and deeper here, like we're on the, we've defeated the first set now, mm -hmm. we're on the second set, uh, we're doing, like we're at a new defensive location you can see here that's near the river walk in uh, here, and like yeah, we're going to break the fourth wall. We uh, <laughs> we're developers, so we were able to change it to our other faction. It's not always going to be fallen. We have the hive that were shown prominently in our poster art. Oh, that's right. Yeah, for the uh, the nice. more keen eyes at home, they may have noticed that behind the scenes, the faction has changed. So uh, when when Jerome mentioned it earlier. Every single one of the, the armies at the, the, the Witnesses' behest is going to go ahead and be a part of this fight, potentially. Or which ones are they, rather? Or if you don't mind me asking, I should say, Jerome. This is your... Favorite. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got Fallen and, uh, and Hive are going to be pressing the last city, but the Taken are definitely uh, active elsewhere. Yeah. They're sort of the... They're being marshaled for other purposes, which I won't. Uh, other elements of the seasonal mention. story are yet to be revealed. We'll let that obviously uh, uh, uncover let itself. That goes on naturally. Yeah, there's there's plenty for the lore hounds out there to go ahead and discover. Uh, Jerome, when, also too, when you're putting together a story like this, you know, obviously kind of helping us realize what the witness's mission is. Like, what was kind of some of your inspiration as you kind of looked at this activity and the opportunity it presented to the narrative team? We always start with the characters like the emotions of the characters, what, mm -hmm. from their perspective, how they would see things, how they would react. Certainly. Um, and so that's what made Shaxx a natural fit for this. It's such a gear-focused um, activity. It's so ferocious. Mm -hmm. We needed a voice that matched that level of intensity. Yeah. And so that's where we, uh, where we came up with Shax. Yeah, Shax is like the perfect hype man Honestly. for this, right? Um, it's so great when you get later in the rounds and he just kind of makes you feel like you can keep going. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's his goal, right? The Crucible is not a forgiving place and he's there bringing folks in every single day that he possibly can. So He's been preparing sense. us for this. That's what the yeah, Crucible yeah. is for. No, and that's a great way to look at this. The Crucible is, is, is preparing, you know, fighting other Guardians to sharpen ourselves to, 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 to you know, fight a war. And this is just fighting a war. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this is what we've been sharpening ourselves for. You know, yeah. this is that moment. Uh, also, too, kind of in that theme, uh, we got a question from Cozy Spartan in chat. Are there any other weapons that are coming back? As a quick reminder, we're gonna. This is the first of actual three, or actually three streams as well. So next week we're gonna be talking about that. So make sure and mark your calendar and tune in then. Uh, today this is just a taste of onslaught and kind of a, a first look at what's to come in the brand new activity. Joining us with Destiny 2 into the light. I'm out of money, I'm broke. No. <laughs> All out of scrap already? Yes. I bought one thing. <laughs> I suppose I spent it all on these two turrets, which have been. Performing pretty well, actually. Yeah. I, I, I'm a person, I prefer to upgrade a few things because their effectiveness is uh, you know, much more heightened when you upgrade it. So I feel like if you all pool your resources to make a few traps really good, that might serve you well. But, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? I know when you do legendary and you're in GM, you're really going to need those uh, defenses to help you out because those enemies are powerful and they are focusing down your ADU unrelentingly. Yeah. All right, so we've touched on there are three different defensive tools at our disposal between the turrets, the trip mines, and obviously the decoy sweet bot. Uh, and those are upgradable, if I remember correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Cool. Uh, how far do those go up? Like what level? It'll be three. Three? Awesome. And uh, as I understand it too, there's a pretty steep progression as they go ahead and continue leveling up. That scrap really ends up being worth it. They become more expensive, but yeah, they also like, it's not like a linear progression, it's more logarithmic. They, yeah. they kind of jump up in power. Yeah. But you got to keep them safe too, right? The enemies, like, you, you might get an augmentation where, like, one of those big knights or big uh, fallen captains comes in and just smashes them. Yeah. And so you, you definitely want to try to keep the space clear. Yeah. A brig drops in from low orbit and that just happens. smashes it into bits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been known to happen. Who knows? Yeah. Now, in that instance, if one of your defenses is destroyed, Destroyed, do you repurchase it at level one? Yes, you have, yes, you you have lose to lose that. that, that oh, that wow. Progress. Yeah. And that's one of the things you have to watch out for with trip mines. You know, like I said, they have charges and they will just, you know, they will go out on their own, but th that's why they're so cheap. You're going to have to rebuy them once you run out of charges. Yeah. And also, I think I saw a question in chat. I missed the name, so apologies to whoever asked this. Uh, is scrap individual or is it fire team wide? So it, we've got an interesting way of doing it. So the, the fire team earns scrap together, mm -hmm. but you each get to spend individually. Oh. So, so you can't mess up 
uh, your, your fire team uh, mates by like overspending. You've got your own little yeah. stock, your own little wallet, yeah. or purse uh, of scrap to spend. Uh, so you can coordinate if you want, or you could just spend how you see fit to help the team. Yeah. In general, like anything you purchase is just going to help. Yeah. As someone too, like in the past, I've played you know personally like a lot of wave best wave based defense games. There we go. Um, when it comes to the upgrades, I imagine like you were saying, it's pretty logarithmic. Is there a feeling of wanting to instead of getting you know three level one turrets, three level one turrets, get one level three turret, for example? Like is that power gain kind of the one you want to be chasing if you're pushing those higher levels? I think it's definitely valuable to do that as yeah. long as you can keep it safe. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like, fair it, sometimes it might be better to spread out the yeah that's true the damage but like a lot of that's going to vary like which the which augments or which enemies are coming in yeah and you're not going to be able to control that you're just going to have to react like it might be yeah. this might be an easy wave of just some thrall yeah but it could be a bunch of exploder shanks too yeah, <laughs> yeah. we may um, Tom, who would put a bunch diversity? of exploder shanks into a wave who on earth would possibly be responsible for that <laughs> You can blame Noah. I, I, you can blame me for drop pods. You can, you can blame Noah. <laughs> I've done a lot. That <laughs> Everyone who spoke to their therapist about coil, Cabal drop pods, you know, you can go ahead and charge that directly to Tom. You can follow him on Twitter uh, right now. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Noah, out of or pardon me, uh, Jerome, out of curiosity too, when it comes to kind of the seasonal story and where this fits in. So again, we're digging our heels in, fighting against the witness, just sharpening ourselves. The next step pretty much is just to go ahead and hold out for as long as we can in preparation for that next battle, I'm assuming? Absolutely. We're, uh, we're waiting for Crow to essentially build a bridge in concert with uh, Mara, with help from Osiris and others. And uh, so it's really the universe is on Crow's shoulders. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't... We couldn't imagine anyone better suited yeah. for the task. Yeah. Uh, Crow has come a long way in yeah. a short amount of time. Yeah. And I think he deserves an opportunity to to show what he can do. Yeah. And I think he'll come through for us. Still, uh, still has uttered one of my favorite lines. Yeah, we went ahead and chased him into the next into the into the the astral plane. Well, I just shot at him until he ran away. But your way is better. <laughs> He's earned his spot. He's ready to go. Obviously. Uh, all right, Noah, where are we at? What are, you, what are we looking at right now? So right now we're looking at one of our waves. I, like I was trying to say earlier, mm -hmm. we actually have a wide diversity of waves, like as we've seen with the Hive and the Fallen, that it's not just, you know, fighting Acolytes and Thralls every time we have different compositions. So this is a wave full of exclusively Ogres and Cursed Thrall. <laughs> cursed Thrall are nice because it allows you to chunk the Ogres if they're grouped up. Yeah. But at the same time, they're Cursed Thralls, and as we see, they are just booking it straight toward the ADU. These ogres seem very dedicated to their task out of the gate, honestly. It seems like within a millisecond, they're just lighting up anything they can possibly see. Yeah, I think they're really, they're really dedicated uh, to the witness, and you know, I think they're also kind of stupid, so they're just <laughs> you know, doing what they, what they know. I'm not brave enough to say that to an ogre's face, but I respect <laughs> you for being able to do so. So we're seeing another bonus objective here, actually, which is there are going to be pyramid splinters that spawn, that's a great, now where are they? I think there's one up behind you, Noah. Oh, oh, right here, look at that. And then if you keep following it, it kind of leads you away from the space and, I can't find my distance, there we go. We're able to get, we're able to get heavy ammo, which I desperately needed because my very bloodline is out of ammo. Uh, that's right, I never heard So there's tension, right, when those splinters lead you away from the ADU, right, you need to kind of have, uh, split your attention in, in two directions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing that we were really wanting to index on. So for these critical, uh, not critical objectives, for these augments, they kind of uh, incentivize players to like leave the ADU and kind of have roles. As we see, we got splinter mines and you have guards that are guarding them. We have Clayton and Ashley doing that for me while I defend the ADU. And that kind of means that you have less people defending. Like the, the wave is still coming towards you, but there's things you have to do, and, th and those distractions, which aren't really optional, are uh, kind of what gives you that tension, and kind of allows for interesting build crafting decisions. Like that's something I kind of wanted to go into. Something that excites me yeah. as somebody who's kind of seen how our seasonal meta kind of develops with things like Strand Titan and Solar over and over. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing if interesting things come out of like Onslaught. You're not trying to stay alive yourself. You're trying to keep this ADU alive which is a you know object completely separate from you. So like, is Stasis gonna be more useful? We're seeing uh, Ashley use Arc. Uh, she's using Arc Souls, which has proven to be really useful against the Fallen. Like, is yeah. Risk Runner gonna be something people wanna use, or Trinity Ghoul, or Sunshot? Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna forget that happened, that's fine. Yeah. 
So also, Drew, when, when it comes to the build crafting element, I can probably imagine when you're doing the GM difficulties, like it's not just your own build you're worried about, but making sure you have that communication across to your team, across champion mods, across uh, element types. Like there's probably a whole heck of a lot to actually make sure you're keeping track of throughout this like, yeah. entire activity. There's a lot going on in the activity from a moment from a moment perspective. We have a bunch of different wave types, augments, you know, different squad compositions and different bosses as we're seeing, and augments there. So really, like build is king. Like you're still shooting shooting bad guys. You using your abilities, using space magic, but it's all a matter of like how you use it in each situation. Like maybe you want something more offensive when you're fighting a boss yeah. or you know, bring in that spark and rift, but when you're in the ADU, you might want something that'll help you hunker down. Actually too, no, we're on that subject of augments. Uh, something you mentioned yesterday I thought was pretty cool were boss augments as kind of the levels continued to progress. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So we just did an augment just now that had uh, capture points spawn in the arena. Oh, we have one right here. And what that does is that calls in uh, turrets that will eventually come and help us out. If we call both of them, they'll all activate, and that serves to kind of get some heat off of you. Yeah. And just overall kind of help, like, these are level three turrets. You know, you see they're in blue. They're looking really nice and spiffy. Yeah. And again, you were saying at level three, the fire rate also increases? Yes, in the fire rate, health, and damage increases it's for not them. Bad but they cost 6,000 scrap, so you're going to need to save up a lot. Okay. I think it's... 12,000 scrap altogether for like going from level one. Can you just roll that leftover shrieker eye into some enemies maybe just for the, oh, it fell Where'd off. Where'd it go? Mind. All right. Go full? Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the void calls. All right, so what level are we on now? Out of curiosity. We're on wave, wave 20. 20. Was that 20? Okay, cool. Yep. Awesome. Man, this is going well, honestly. Uh, yeah, I will say, uh, especially after yesterday, we learned that Noah is one of the most dangerous to ever wield the two thumbsticks out there. Uh, to all the PvP streamers as well, go ahead and challenge him openly on the internet. Hey, I go yeah. flawless, you know, <laughs> check my KD. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I thought you were the gilded one. I, well, I don't want to brag, but as a four times gilded flawless, uh, I mean, I'll let you guys brag for that. That's wow. Hey, I'm going to brag too. I got, I got Riven's Bane back in Forsaken. Petra's run, that was tough. You know, all my Riven's Banes out there, we know what's up. Oh. And Shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, got it. There's, a, there's a, a chapter of everyone's dream journal dedicated to that particular time in their lives, obviously. <laughs> Drop the bungee ID, they're saying. Perhaps, I'll <laughs> leave that up to him. That is his- Oh, I can do it. No, I'll do it. <laughs> Check my rave report. Check my dungeon. Hey, I'm there, bro. <laughs> Noah is ready, honestly. He's prepared <laughs> for this moment. Uh, let's see here. So new ADU, new location? Yep. Yes, well, that's something I neglected to mention. So every time you do a boss, you will actually change locations, and let me just buy something real quick so I have money. But the, uh, the defenses you pick, like that you place before in your previous locations, those will still be active. So that means that you building up your defenses over time, you obviously can't upgrade these since they're not at the location you're on, but they will help you when the waves get harder. So you having a level three turret or level three decoy somewhere, that will actually help you out, and you'll be able to take aggro from the waves. Like we see, hey, the, the turret right there <laughs> doing damage to the knights. That, it all kind of helps that feeling of feeling like you're the vanguard and the last city, like you're helping to defend them. Yeah. These emplacements are permanent and not just temporary. Okay. You're really, really digging the trenches and setting yourself in. Okay, we'll, get, uh, we'll put that on the list of things that chat didn't see. We get a veto. <laughs> that's the one that everyone gets to forget. Sorry, chat, but that didn't just happen. Everyone uh, makes mistakes, man. Also, too, actually, uh, J.R. Bizzle in chat asks, uh, are the rewards going to be tied to the wave you get to? Now, I know Noah kind of mentioned this a little bit when he was referencing the coil earlier, but you know, obviously there's a, a, between the level 10, or pardon me, the 10 wave and the 50 wave versions, You know, what's the reward story for each one? So in, in all the activities, every time you beat 10 waves and you beat the boss, you'll get a chest. Okay. Get rewards. Every 10 waves, yep. you get, okay. And then in the uh, the challenge mode, there's a normal and the hard version of those. In the normal version, you'll get, uh, you get a normal chest all the way until the last wave. You can beat the final wave, yeah. you'll get double rewards. Oh, okay. And then if you play the, the hard mode, yeah. you'll get, you get uh, additional rewards in all the waves. Excellent, okay. And, and so like, there's some little surprises there too we might have along the way that, that, yeah. uh, at the end as well, just if you're lucky. Excellent, yeah, for the ones that are really gonna go ahead and try it a few times out, maybe there's an additional variable thrown in there from time to time. Excellent, yeah. Um, also too, actually, uh, Kurt Jones 29 asks, how do revives work in this activity, both between normal and legend? So that's actually a great question. Um, as we see now, there is not, oh my good lord, Wait, give me a second, give me a second. <laughs> what a great time to think critically, <laughs> the tormentor on your doorstep. I, I can answer that for Noah, no, no, take down the tormentor. Um, the, the way that oh, revives work is like in the uh, it, the first two sets, yeah. darkness is off. But when we get to the third set, we yeah. turn darkness on. So and extinguish. if you all go down, 
or the ADU goes down, the activity's over. That's it. Okay. Yep. So you just take the rewards you got for the two. And in Legend, that that's on by default. Yeah, you don't lose any rewards. Every every set you complete, you'll get rewards. Yeah. Uh, but if you're halfway through a set and you fail, yeah, that's it. That's it. God. Just take your lunchbox and God. go home. Yeah. Well, you can hop right back in the playlist. Or that's hop right back in with your friends. and yeah. Try again. Which is what I'm gonna do, frankly. Yeah. Honestly, like I, like when when this was getting developed behind the scenes here, and was, we were kind of getting a sense of what Into the Light was gonna be. I gotta tell you, like just the the I don't know the ability to just go ahead and keep diving back in, testing new builds. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has every single one of their loadout slots filled with some hyper specific loadout that I'm deeply in love with in its own way. And so I feel like this is the exact right time to go ahead and just continue diving in and just you know yeah. bolstering those loadouts to begin with with the brave arsenal which again we'll be talking about next week don't you worry uh, but also too is just get a chance to go ahead and really see how they can they can thrive in environments just outside of you know even as difficult as gms can be find something that really pushes it beyond that standard level that we're used to yeah and you're, you're gonna need to, be, need to be ready for a lot we're trying to throw a lot of variety at you right there's yeah. the two combatant factions that you're going to be facing and the fallen hive that can randomly be in there when you start the mission there's a, the the multiple defensive locations and there's like the, the progression of the waves, there's augments, the, all these things are kind of working in, together in concert to like test your ability to coordinate as a team and in your build game too. Excellent. Uh, also too, actually, uh, Optimal Pickle in chat, wonderful name I might add, uh, is also curious, I know we just talked about scrap gathering obviously and how everyone kind of gets their own purse. Are you able to gift that scrap to other people or you just get your own purse as a you, result of uh, You just get your own gift purse. Gift the scrap, yeah. but you can both, uh, like if someone uh, places something else, you could upgrade it. Okay, you can it. coordinate. Got it. Your spend. They can drop the level two. You can upgrade, or they yep. can drop the level one. You can upgrade it to level two. Yep. Nice. Very good. All right, that communication is going to be. Uh, okay, we wanted to keep it simple and fast. Like we, we didn't want to have like we did a lot of work to make sure it was as streamlined as it could be because currency can get complicated if sure. you're not careful about it. In the heat of battle, honestly, yeah, it's like a uh, sweeper yeah, bot, whatever. Wants yeah. to open their wallet and be like, you got a five? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> can you break three thousand scrap? <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> I'm getting shot here. That's right. Just a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go still help. Yeah, with that. Let's see. We're getting up there in the ways and they're getting a little bit more beefy. <laughs> yeah, you guys are, are, are murdering your way through. This is going great. Another thing I really appreciate about Onslaught, other than like the fact you can get lost in it, is like yeah. this is just gonna be a great place to go. Yeah. And and just like if you want to do bounties, if you want to do triumphs, you've got yeah. you know things you want to level up, catalysts, like oh, just, man. just like hop in onslaught and chill. And yeah. You'll you'll be able to really like you know tear through a lot of enemies yeah. and like hear that, hear that everyone you can leave the the opening gates of grasp of avarice finally <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, sure you don't have to the farm there anymore don't have to input that wish yeah and in some waves are really like hard and other waves like you just you've got a bunch of guys coming down a hallway and you yeah. unload your supers, unload your, your ammo, and it feels awesome. Yeah. Really, like, you have that peak power fantasy. Yeah. It's also to uh, know you're getting some some cred in chat for your ability to dispatch champions. Uh, I don't know why people are asking about a bungee dev fighting champion mobs. I don't know if that's a reference to something, mm. but you'll have to remind us in chat. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I recall that moment, necessarily. Oh, oh, I know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm that guy. I'll, dr I'll drop the bungee at. I don't care, man. <laughs> Check me out. I believe you, honestly. I envy that level of confidence. Yeah, I, I'd be dead. I hide in the background. I have my, my name in game is just Andy, and I hide amongst the, the field of other Andys with all of our little hash numbers at the end of our name, honestly. Though if you see the one with the dead man's tail, you, you know that's me for certain. Great honestly. weapon. One of my favorites, honestly. It's so good. It's so stylish. It's just like my favorite gun in any video game ever, honestly. It's really, really good. Uh, though, then again, we get along pretty darn well. Okay, so we're back on the pyramid ship. Drum, yes, also every two. six waves, actually, you're gonna... Six, thank well, you. Well, on the sixth wave of each thing, so six, 16, 26, 36, you know, et cetera. Okay. You will take the fight to the witness and have a cool little encounter that's, you know, it's, it's, it feels like an action movie. You're, yeah. You and your team get to run down against waves, uh, against waves of combatants, you know, in this hallway, and then there's an invincible warden at the end, and the only way to dispatch him and move on is you have to dunk in like, the wrist. Oh, and he little, pushed me. Little, little, little breather. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All the waves. Also, too, actually, you know, Jerome, from a from a lore standpoint, you know, from a mechanic standpoint, obviously, this helps, you know, make sure that we're pushing forward in the activity and we've got a, a, an appropriate challenge. But why are the Guardians able to go ahead and even head back into these pyramid ships to go ahead? It took us a long time to gain that power. Yeah. And, uh, now the the it's sort of permeable. It can go both ways, right? Yeah. Uh, the witnesses' forces are much more able to access our space, as we can see, right? They're in Certainly. the middle of Midtown, um, but we are also able to access their space more. Yeah. So um, it's a double-edged sword, yeah. so to speak. They opened that door. Now they can't. Take That's it right. Back. The yeah. guardians are going to be in there, emoting and meddling and having a grand old time. <laughs> see, there we go. 
Let's go ahead and flex your raid emotes. It's all right. Let's get it out of the way. I say that bitterly jealous because I don't have any of them. So up to wave 27 now. All right. Ooh. Oh my lord. Yeah, this is starting to, starting okay. to get spicy out here. All right. <laughs> let's, let's lock in, guys. <laughs> Sorry, we're just making it more, uh, more theatrical. Yeah, we totally aren't trying at all. It's so crazy. I just know I'm going to turn a corner and there's going to be the cursed thrall, like, <laughs> right there. <laughs> you see it. Oh, all right. I got uh, alt tabbed a little bit. Oh, alt tabbed. Alt tabbed? Okay, all right. Yeah. I was about to say, I was like, oh, I got alt tabbed again. Uh, I was like, is that building behind yep, everyone. the screen? Yep, also, too, uh, just for everyone's awareness, too, uh, we're here live in the dev environment. Uh, so, what you're seeing is obviously a quick peek behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, we're obviously working off of a dev build right now. Nice. And doing the finisher appropriately on the thralls. My favorite is the like quick draw gunslinger one. Yeah. Hunter, I actually just bought it. I was like, I need it. The solar one that kind of does like, yeah. the, the twirl around like, his finger? Oh, yeah. I, I was like, I need that. So, <laughs> I'll give up anything. I, I got it the, I think it was, was it Guardian Games last year where you got the chair to go ahead and just send them flying at a thousand <laughs> miles an hour? It's hard to be Never gets old. Yeah, absolutely never gets old. That looks like Ashley and Clayton are just carrying me right now. They're going crazy. Uh, I mean, it is their job to be good. I mean, they're they're they've been doing this for yeah. months. They, I mean, they don't really have the, the technically the world world's first, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we're the world. That's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, in our hearts. No, it, it really, that's going to be, be for players, right? We want yeah, certainly. all of you to be able to hop in this again. Yeah, this is available for all players, Yeah, which is also really exciting. It's kind of like a, a big gift from all of us here My at Bungie God. to all of you uh, out there, all of our guardians, our community. Yeah. So, you know, thank you. We're excited to, to be able to, you know, you know, you know get, get you all buff to take on the witness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, you know, it's not going to be easy, obviously. Yeah. Just another to opportunity work. to equip everyone, you know, yeah. obviously. Something I wanted to mention, just to like get a little peek behind the curtain when it comes to uh, our friend Sweeperbot here, is he used to be the best uh, the best decoy in the game, like better than all his other tiered variants because there was a bug where only the broom would take any damage. And as we see, he's really skinny, so he was like basically nigh untouchable. Functionally immortal sweeper bot. Oh my god. Must be nice, obviously, just to have your horcrux or whatever it is, right? But it's just his broom this time, as it would turn out. We fixed it, though. Yeah, it's fair. All right. Yeah, we, yeah. Fair. It'll live on, again, another thing that lives on strictly in our hearts. Yes. Um, also, too, out of curiosity, uh, Vadar477 in chat asks, uh, will there be, like, if you have just two people on your fire team and you want to go in solo, is there a private mode you can dive into this with? I believe that you hop in the higher difficulties, you can do yeah. that. Excellent. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So everyone out there that wants to really challenge themselves, maybe uh, attempt to solo all 50 waves? Yeah. I think the theory is, our running theory is that it's a possible i think it's not possible that's my charge to the community can you beat legend solo by your like obviously that's what solo means but can you beat yeah, legend but solo someone's gotta do it if my teammate on the social media team mitch is out there watching while on vacation so don't you dare be working i think he's got that challenge cut out for himself as well hey i've learned not to underestimate the destiny community at all especially like in mission whetstone i thought it would take a lot longer for people to yeah. do that that was quick yeah um, like so you know I mean, honestly, Players we underestimate good. the Guardians much as the same as the Witness at our own peril. So obviously, none of us want to do that. Uh, if anything, I'm just excited to go ahead and see this get in players' hands on April 9th. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm so excited to see like what strategies people come up with. As we see, we have another augment here, uh, yeah. where you are killing spark hoarders to spawn a spark, and when you dunk the rift, it actually does a chunk of damage to the boss. Which, if you're looking at the mega at the health bar at the bottom, you will see it does a decent amount. So when you get to bosses that are a little chunkier, yeah. these are ways to do extra damage to them. Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. Great. Not too shabby. I am also, I'll say it again, I'm so bitterly jealous I don't have buried bloodline right now. Like, you're making it look so good. I was going to have to carry you. It's good. It's a good gun. Especially if you're on other subclasses. It's just free devour plus the catalyst. You get devour and weaken pretty much on demand by using it. It's also, too, maybe a small thing, but my personal favorite, uh, just if I had to pick a champion mod, and I know it doesn't work like that, but I do have to give credit to anti-barrier, because it's every single barrier. It doesn't matter if it's a Hive Knight shield, doesn't matter if a, if a Taken mm -hmm. Vandal goes ahead and puts their shield up, or if a Hobgoblin goes ahead and, and cloisters up. Like It's just like, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna keep shooting you right in the face. This is oh not God. how this works for you. <laughs> okay. No! What happened? All right, we're, we're at a stream veto moments, obviously. Uh, no, no sorry, happen. but this shame you have to live with. That didn't happen. Are you sure yeah. you want to hand out your Bungie ID still? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. I don't, All right. I don't back down. I'll leave it to you on Twitter. That's fine. <laughs> I'll get cooked. It's fine. Again, at our own peril, we underestimate. 
So is this, the, is this the final boss encounter in the pyramid for this particular wave? Yes, for this particular wave. I think we're on wave 30. Yes. Which means we're on our last, uh, our last wave, which is Here we take go. the fight to the boss. Again. So it's definitely a, a little bit beefier than the last two bosses. Little yeah. Little but we're going to dunk lap. and this kill is, it in one shot. Trial. Here we go. Oh. There we go. So, and also too, is that that, um, that dunking mechanic that does extra damage to the boss, that's just a, is that like a modifier that kind of gets randomly yeah. added with each particular boss? That's one of those augments, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there's no guarantee you're going to get that one necessarily. Nope. Even better. Excellent. All right. Guys, let's do the Evo. No! <laughs> Uh, all right, let's keep running more waves. Also, too, actually, uh, I, I saw a question pop up in chat. Again, I apologize, I missed the name. Twitch chat is moving fast, but thank you to all you Guardians for joining us. Uh, is there any kind of a timer present in this activity, or do you just get to dive in and take your time? The only timer is actually present in the purchase phase. We want to keep mm -hmm. kind of keep that fast place flow going. Yeah. But otherwise, we just have the timer ticking up to see you know how long your session has been. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no timer. We, you're not. We're not counting down like yeah. 10 minutes to beat a whole wave or something. Yeah. The only real fail condition is, 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 is the fire team alive mm -hmm. and is ADU still standing? Got it. Okay. And again, once the ADU is gone, that's it. That's it. Okay. You yeah. lose on wave one somehow. That's yeah. it. Generally, okay. we want to be pretty clear about our failure conditions. We don't want to stack. Yeah. A bunch of like, like, oh, you have to do That's it. fair. There's like an A and B and a C, not, nothing like that. Okay. And again, you're only defending its one ADU that kind of will transition. Only the current ADU. It will, it will move with you. Got it. Okay. Thank you. That's perfect. Uh, also, to chat, I see you asking for information on the loot. To, to show us what weapons are on the way, tune in next week. We'll have plenty for yeah. you. I can promise you that. Yeah, Shax is, um, if you go into the lore, Shax is working with um, some folks, some characters from the past. That's right, yeah. And also opening up his private reserve Interesting. Uh, for our use. Yeah. So. So is this, also, is this something Shax has been sitting on for a while, or has he been working on this behind the scenes? Well, there have been some some weapons that yeah. uh, have been frowned upon in the Crucible. Sure. Yeah. And uh, but now's the time to bring those bring those out. Yeah. Anything Vanguard that, outlawing stuff is not something we have time for at this point. Exactly. Yeah. And if it uh, if it's dangerous, now's the time to bust it out. All the better. Obviously. You know, yeah. high risk, high reward. That's how I see it. And we, if anything, are facing down our biggest risk in the witness so far, obviously. So making sure that Shax goes ahead and opens those coffers. Uh, nothing short of generous, I'll say. Just... And do you have improved uh, ability at regeneration right now, or are you just that good? No. Uh, that's what... I feel like you you're not you're hearing that. me. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you have mentioned that once no or twice, actually. I don't know. <laughs> no one maybe plays an unhealthy amount of destiny. Sometimes I will, <laughs> not I even sometimes, oftentimes I get off work and immediately I'm like, okay. I think there was a I was on there, Noah, by the way. I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, that's <laughs> but I immediately get on and play. I, I do raids and dungeons. I, I mean, I've been doing a lot of coil recently. Yeah, I, uh, my, I my, Rasaraga. my dad and I end up playing this game a lot, and so basically every single day after work, it's oh, just cool. like us texting each other being like, hey, so when, when are you hopping on? When are you done with dinner? That's fun. <laughs> I imagine we'll probably more so do the easy modes, but I've got my, my Nightfall crew I'm sure I could dive in here with. Although, honestly, I think at this point he's, he's more loot paid, my dad, than any of us, so I think he'd have no problem diving in here. That's awesome to hear. That's what Destiny is all about, right? Yeah, it's Bringing people fun. together? Yeah. yeah. All right, that's getting pretty intense. Uh, let's see. Out of curiosity as well, uh, I'm not sure if we can mention this one, but is, uh, Tom, is there a light level increase within to the light, or is this still at 1830? I believe it is. It is at the current power. Current power? Cool. Yep. All right, that hasn't changed. Thank you, Nikki Knight, for that question as well. Oh, it's time. I can make is it time? a super... T okay, no. I don't have enough for that. Nice. How much scrap are you sitting on right now? I was on 5,000. Okay. Oh, that was too late. Wrapped for cash. Wrapped for cash. You, you got uh, on the narrative, narrative team, department. Honestly, that yeah. is, I want to say, obnoxiously good. It's like it's always like, man, we appreciate that. These guys are just stealing our job. <laughs> want to write tweets? No. All right. Is... Remaining intense. And again, we're still fighting the hive. We were fighting the fallen earlier. Oh my, please. So there will be multiple sets of the witnesses' armies going ahead and chasing ah. us down in this activity. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Usually it's just Actually one super run. Right, yeah, yeah. For uh, the sake of the developer yeah. tools, we went ahead and just swapped that over just yep. so folks can get a, a look. You know it's getting harder when uh, Noah stops flexing. I know, right? Yeah. Actually okay, having, uh, there's a lot going on, you know? There is. Like, 
fairness. And I think also, too, this is something we sort of touched on yesterday when we were doing our initial playthroughs, but uh, especially when you get to these higher levels and it's not just kind of the, you know, the, the proverbial, comparatively speaking, walk in the park that the first few are, like, you really got to keep your comms crisp with your team. You got to make sure that you're really aligning, um, not even necessarily your, your champion mods, but maybe sending your scrap to one part to really go ahead and stymie the bad guys there so you can focus your attention, your abilities, your supers on another lane. Um, actually, also, too, to that end, uh, obviously the, the, the you know, pyramids have been doing some terraforming, but, um, you know, Tom, when you guys were building this activity, how are you guys going about even changing these maps? It looks like you guys have changed the architecture in some pretty significant ways. Uh, yeah, so so when we looked at these maps, right, we want to have like a bunch of, bunch of distinct lanes for the enemies to kind of like attack the ADU from, and they give you like these fronts that you have to divide your attention yeah. across the team. So you really have to be like, oh, they're coming from the left, they're coming from the right, you take yeah. this way, I take that way. Yeah. And yeah. like uh, a lot of times in, the, in the, these maps, they're great for PvP, yeah. but they didn't have the lanes we needed, and the artists and the designers working together like, oh, like what if like the pyramids yeah. just like evaporated this building right here? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like great. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and that really. We, so we had to open up some 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 channels in here, and like that, you know, we got the great, you know, fictional context where we can be like, no, it's yeah. forces. It's not, you know, it's, yeah, it's not Todd. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, and also, too, I'm, I'm getting some word from the Traveler in the Sky. Uh, no, I hate to break it to you, but we have come to the end of our gameplay segment. You must re return from your throne world. I think I performed pretty well. I I th yeah. I'll be the first to agree with you, especially because I don't want to have to face you down in this activity. I want your help, honestly. When yeah, we'll just 1v1 in yeah. Crucible sometime. Yeah, and also, too, is I think, uh, I, I think we can say that, but this is going to happen. We maybe won't say where, but this isn't the only location that players are going to have. Yeah, there's a lot available right. to them. Yeah, there will be more than that, obviously. Uh, Noah, welcome back from the th Throne World. It's good to see you. I got a lot of tithes. You know, I'm feeling like, I feel like Eris and I are comparable right now. So you're going to turn into a hive? Never mind. I, won't want, I don't want to attempt turning into a hive god. That's fine. We'll leave that for your That's own the next adventures. expansion. Obviously, that's true. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but no, Noah, thank you very much for taking us through that. Yeah, uh, thanks and for having me. And of course, for everyone here in Twitch chat, thank you for joining us. But before we go ahead and head on out, uh, you know, we obviously, this is just kind of the first look at what's to come in Destiny 2 Into the Light. Again, as a reminder, we're going to be doing three streams showing up all of this content that's going to be coming out, available to all players. Uh, and of course, before we go ahead and head off, uh, you know, Tom, you guys have all worked so heavily on this activity. Uh, Tom, we'll start with you. When Onslaught releases, when it gets in players' hands on April 9th, what are you most looking forward to? I, I really want to see what players do with the defenses. I want to see like yeah. what, what their strategies are. I know Noah's got his strategies. I've got mine. But maybe mine are a little less developed than his. <laughs> um, and, and just to be able to like, see, also, it's a great time to get back in and play. It's going to yeah. be a great time to play Destiny. It's going to be like, new activities, tons of rewards. Um, it's it's going to be fun. I'm going to be hopping in with you know, me, me and my sons. It's gonna yeah, be that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jerome, as someone who's gone ahead and helped craft the story to bring this to life, obviously, to make sure it fits into the Destiny universe so well, uh, what are you most looking forward to when this releases on April 9th? Uh, first of all, people getting absolutely hyped out of their minds for the final shape. And I want to see what builds arise out of this. It's a kind of a different strategic calculus yeah. than we've seen before. So I want to see how the uh, players innovate and uh, deal with this new challenge. Strategic calculus. I'm going to file that one away. That's the, the narrative team, everyone. Jeez, just making us all look bad. Uh, and of course, Noah, you know, you've, you've helped brick by brick put this together, this brand new activity. Um, you know, as someone who's obviously spent a ton of time playing it in addition to developing it, you know, when it gets out into the wild, when you've got the chance to play it with your friends, what are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to just getting my reps in, seeing how far we can get, especially on Legend, get extra rewards, have an extra difficulty, yeah. just have fun with friends and trying to see, like, like Jerome was saying, like what builds arise, like what cool stories come out of playing things like this. Like we saw, you can have a big tormentor show up and like yeah. all these different things, those little emergent moments are what really makes Onslaught special at the end of the day. Yeah. And I'm really proud of what the team and everyone has done. Like I'm a very small part of a larger team. Teams are way better than heroes. Yeah. And you're here. You know, Everyone has done such a great job building Onslaught and just curating stuff for Into the Light. I'm so excited for what's going to show up in these next live streams. Awesome. Yeah, and thank you guys all three for being here today to represent the team and help us kind of, you know, show this first glimpse at Into the Light to all the players out there. Obviously, it's pretty great to have you guys here bright and early in the morning. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yep. All right, everyone. Well, I believe that's it from us here at Bungie HQ. As a quick reminder, again, we'll be back next week at the same Bungie time, same Bungie place, to show you some even more content about Into the Light, including some returning Guardian favorite weapons, which you may have gotten a glimpse of today, a brand new look at an all new social space as well that you can take your fire team down to, and even more information about upcoming rewards. Before we obviously send it off, I want to again thank our guests here for joining us today, to the entire Destiny development team who behind the scenes right now is working on this content, bringing it to life for all of us. Thank you all so much for your hard work. To Clayton and Ashley, our play testers in the back who went ahead and helped fill out the fire team. 
I'm getting some waves. There we go. Thank you very much. To the amazing team of producers who are here putting on the show, thank you all so much. Genuinely, it's amazing to have all of your assistants. Uh, they have the distinct difficulty of making me look good on camera, so believe me, their work is cut out for them. And to our team of moderators and chat, you're the real heroes. Thank you so much for your time. But in the meantime, again, reminder, we'll be back next week at the same time and place to show you even more content. But until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you all star side. Hello everyone, good morning, good evening, good day, and good time zone to you all, and welcome back to our second of three live streams to go ahead and talk about what's gonna be coming with Destiny 2 Into the Light on April 9th. As a reminder, everything you're about to see is available to all players, just as was everything last week when we went ahead and had a chance to go ahead and walk through Onslaught. Uh, now, today we've obviously got a few topics that we touched on last week. We got a new social space to go ahead and check out. We're gonna look at some rewards, obviously, uh, and maybe a, a, an up close and personal look at the Brave Arsenal. But of course, I'm not the only one who's gonna be talking through it. I'm joined by an all-star cast of folks here from the Bungie development team. And I'm gonna go ahead and go on down the line and introduce them. If you were here last week, you obviously recognize his face, but uh, Tom Farnsworth, senior design lead. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, yeah. And, uh... A little bit about myself here. I've been yeah. at Bungie for about 12 years, maybe a little longer. It's been a while. A decade uh, plus. And obviously there's some stuff we're going to be looking at today that's kind of like full circle. Yeah. With, you know, the Space Tiger logo yep. and, and the light there from the early days of Destiny. And uh, I've been fortunate to, you know, I, I was able to place the Kavastov way back yeah. in, in Cosmo for you all to pick up. Oh, did and, you really? Yeah, that was, that was something. I, it obviously, it was a foundation. Teams are stronger than heroes. is a big team effort. But yeah. there's a few things that I, I'm really having had a chance to work and proud to, to, to interact with players. And then there's some things I'm a little more inf infamous for, like placing yeah. the, the drop pods and homecoming. <laughs> um, so follow them on Twitter, let them know how you thought about that. Right? And then over yeah. the past few years, I've been working on, on seasons and, yeah. and things like the 30th and Into the Light very as exciting. a creative lead. Awesome, very cool. Thank you very much for your hard work. As someone who's played a lot of it, uh, excited to go ahead and dive in more with even more of it today. And of course, also we're joined by Chris Proctor, senior design lead here at Bungie. Uh, Chris, for the fine folks at home who may not have heard you on a podcast or know anything about you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Bungie? Yeah, hey Andy, thanks. Uh, yeah, I joined Bungie four and a half years ago as a weapons feature lead for Destiny 2. Um, so a bunch of Destiny releases, this will be my 17th with Into the Light. That all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Going through like a bunch of greatest hits. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be cool. We obviously have a lot of stuff to talk through with the Brave Arsenal today, and uh, Greatest Hits, I think, is probably the best way to describe it. And of course, last but very not least, down at the end, the one and only Kelsey Rice, systems designer here at Bungie. Kelsey, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing great. All right, well, me. obviously, the, uh, the third verse, same as the second and the first. For the folks at home uh, who may not know you or know anything about your work, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Bungie? Yes, I'd love to. Um, first, yes, I'm a systems designer at Bungie. I've been here for about two and a half years, um, and I work on a lot of fun stuff like quests and pursuits and progressions, a lot of like spreadsheet design, which the I really love. The fabric that holds all of our <laughs> adventures together, honestly. Yes. Very exciting. Well, obviously, you've had, had a big hand in Into the Light as well today. We're going to go ahead and dive into that here in just a bit. Um, but, you know, before we go ahead and dive on, and is there anything you guys are excited about today in particular, or should we just go ahead and show rather than just tell? What do you think? Let's show it is. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and, and dive on in. <clears throat> dive on in, rather. So we're going to start off. We have a brand new social space, the Hall of Champions, that we're going to go ahead and check on out. Kelsey, shall you, uh, Kelsey's the one who's responsible for taking us through that. So <laughs> shall you return to the throne world, obviously, and dive on in? Bring me your tithes. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> there are tithes to be gathered. Uh, now, while we're on the way, uh, Tom, Hall of Champions is a brand new social space here in Destiny 2. Uh, where is this? Where are we going to, like, where's this place been? Why are we checking it out now? So Shax has carved out just a, a little, little bit of the, the backstage of the tower. Yeah. Uh, and you're gonna see a, a few little, little fun nods here to, to Destiny history. Yep. All right. We're um, now on screen. Yeah. We've got Kelsey on screen here. We got Sweepy Bot, uh, and this is actually the lead up to the Hall of Champions. <laughs> this is where they keep it all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is where you know. Th there's an off season for a, for a lot of the holiday events. Yeah. A little pile and, of snow. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little snow there. There's some uh, some greenery. This is interesting. All right, so we've, we've found a bit of the storage room to a degree. Uh, so he's he's carved out space maybe that has uh, been hiding in plain view potentially for other sweeper bots or, or red jacks around the tower. And there's, oh, there's some stuff from uh, the, uh, the Onslaught, this ADU. Oh, that's right, uh, yeah. Little, little... Noah put it here himself. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and, and all this space, like, uh, if, 
If we just take a, a step forward, you're gonna, get, there we go. Here's the Champions Hall. Here we go. The Hall go. of Champions. All right, so this um, is the Hall of Champions. And just like uh, Zer kind of carved out Eternity mm -hmm. for, uh, for the 30th anniversary, uh, Shax has, has kind of set this space aside for us and into the light where the, the, all your armor, your weapons, your rewards. This is going to be your, your home base for Into the Light. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Well, Kelsey, uh, can you go ahead and show us a little bit? We're going to go ahead and walk up here. We see a whole bevy of chests, actually. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and start there. What are we What are we looking at, and how do we go ahead and start opening, cracking these open, rather? Yeah. So as you can see, this space is just full of chests. As you can see here, all the, the class icons on the floor, a little bit like 30th. Uh, you can come here to uh, redeem this currency, uh, trophies of bravery, that you're going to earn from completing Onslaught and from playing the broad game in Destiny. Um, so all of these trophies here, if you progress your hype with Shax, uh, you'll be able to spend them here at all these chests to get a really cool set of armor. I can pull open my character so you can see what that looks like on the Hunter. That's right. Also too, so for the folks at home, uh, we, we went ahead and, and mentioned this as well online, but as a quick reminder, this is actually an armor set that is, that's inspired by year one of Destiny 2. Um, Tom, this is the the parade armor set, I believe, is what we're referring yeah, to it as. So, like, the, it's the the the, the uh, yeah D two year one parade armor. That's right. Yeah, you, yeah. You had it in Homecoming. It's kind of a classic set. We're again like full circle here. With yeah, we were like beginning the Destiny two saga there, and now we're kind of you know ending the fight here. We're getting ready to take the fight to the witness, and Shax has yeah. got this this iconic set of armor. We're calling it the parade armor uh, two point Yeah, and um, they, everyone can earn it, it's available to all players, Excellent. and uh, there's some other cosmetics we can show off here that kind of play with it too. Very nice, and also too, for uh, folks out there, we obviously, we have the Hunter here. Actually, Kelsey, can we check out the uh, the armor set one more time? Yeah. For the folks at home. Uh, also too, so this is uh, an up close and personal look, obviously, at this armor set, uh, which will be available to, to everyone that goes ahead and jumps in to Into the Light. Um, also too, there is a Titan set and a Warlock set, we should also say. Uh, that you can go ahead and see in the key art as well, but obviously this will be arriving on April 9th, so you'll get a chance to go ahead and go hands on. But um, yeah, it's looking fresh. Honestly, I'm not too. I, I wouldn't be upset to go ahead and don that armor. Oh yeah, boy, it's really somebody's... interesting. Like setting all these, setting, we're working on all this stuff because we we're kind of waiting to finally see that that set and finally being able to equip it in game was just such a cool experience. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. All right, so we're obviously equipped. We've got an armor set that we're going to go ahead and be chasing down, but. Uh, we're now hanging out with with Shax, and is that our site over there as well? Yes, that is our site. Um, and one other, one last chest I want to point out here. Oh, too. please. This one is going to be your hub for um, just grinding out weapons. So uh, th those those uh, trophies that you'll be collecting with Shax, you can just keep redeeming them here, um, and you'll be able to get all your guns here. Um, and this one here is, uh, we're bringing back the Gift of the Thunder Gods. Uh, so if you need to catch up on your power level to make sure that you're sorry, like ready to hop right in, that's something you can do as well. Sweet. That's right, and honestly, it's been, it's, uh, again, as a reminder, this is available to all players, and so if you've got any friends that maybe aren't quite at that powerful cap, also, too, actually, to double check, this will bring folks up to the powerful cap, was it? Powerful, not pinnacle. That's right, okay, perfect, all right. So, for your friends that want to go ahead and dive in right alongside you, even if they maybe haven't played, you know, very much recently, they got a chance to go ahead and just catch right up. They'll be ready. Be ready for day one, that's yeah. right. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, let's go ahead and talk to Shax, actually, as a starting point. So, how are we going to be working with Shax, obviously? He's opened up his Den of Antiquities to us, but, uh, Kelsey, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we need to pull out all the stops in Defeating the Witness, so uh, Shax has opened up his brave arsenal for us. And as you can see, Shax is really, like, the shining star of this area. We've been, I've been kind of panning by all these hollow Shaxes that line the space, which I'll be happy to talk about in a moment. Oh, yes. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go talk to him and see what he's got. Um, so uh, over the course of Into the Light, as you earn, uh, earn reputation with him, you're going to be able to progress and get all this, this cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, one thing in particular I want to point out. Interesting. This key. A, a super black key. Is that, is that what I'm seeing over there, Kelsey? Yeah. Interesting. OK. Yeah, and I wonder where that goes. Um, so Maybe, maybe people that are D1 vets potentially from back in the day might re remember this. Is this, uh, what's this, what's this symbiote we're looking back at, looking <laughs> back here? Yeah, right now it's, it's pretty powerful. It's in containment. But if you keep playing into the light, you'll be able to get access to the keys you need to unlock this. 
um, and get access to the shader. Oh, it's so good. All right. So obviously, too, yes, as a reminder, uh, heads up to everyone. So one of the ultimate rewards available through this will indeed be the return of the Super Black Shader. Uh, it's back, finally. It's back. There's probably some song lyrics to go along with that. I couldn't tell you what they are. But I will say to the Destiny Fashion subreddit, uh, we are prepared for you to go ahead and take this on wholesale. So actually, Great. let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and just equip Super Black and give it a look really quickly. Oh, man. <laughs> Chat, how do you feel? Come on. <laughs> it does not get much better than that. Excellent. All right. Yeah. So Shax is obviously going to be there to help us get rewards. In addition to the Brave Arsenal and the armor, Super Black is waiting for us. Uh, so tell us a little bit about our site as well, actually. He's, uh, he's, I'm not sure if many people in the chat know about him. He's usually lived in lore entries. But um, let's go ahead and get a look and see what we're going to be working with him on. Yeah. So. Our site has a lot of quests for us. Um, and we did some, some pretty interesting things, in my opinion, with, with uh, some of the quests you can pick up from our site. Um, they're going to unlock a couple things. They also have very fun puns that we had a lot, <laughs> a lot of fun working on. Um, so uh, for every single weapon that we're going to be talking about today, there's a corresponding quest. Um, once you've completed the quest for that weapon, you're going to be able to unlock access to that weapon dropping as rewards. But there's two other really cool things uh, that we can talk about there. Yeah. Um, one, we have these special limited edition uh, ap appearances for the mm. Brave Arsenal. Yeah. Um, so completing these quests, you're going to get a front. guaranteed, curated uh, copy of these li limited edition weapons. Excellent. Um, which I'm happy to show. <coughs> they look rad. Um, and you'll unlock attunement, day. which is something I can it talk about to. in a second. Absolutely. Make sure. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of these. So yeah, so here's a look. Of course, uh, obviously for the folks at home, they may they may remember this one. I get a hunch that chat obviously is getting a little excited, but uh, I know it's so exciting. <laughs> the mountaintop has returned. Uh, so this is a quick look at the mountaintop. Obviously, uh, Chris, we're going to dive in more with the whole uh, Brave Arsenal in a little bit. But this is, uh, I believe, she touched on the limited edition edi versions yeah, of these, the ornaments that exist right on there. Can you tell us a little bit about what the limited edition cool variants fight. of these are that are available over the course of Into the Light? Sure, yeah. So the Brave Arsenal weapons will drop from Onslaught. Uh, and we're talking a little bit about attunement and whatnot here. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, low chance that one will drop as a limited edition variant, which comes pre-equipped with a super shiny ornament that's yeah. locked to that weapon. Yeah. Uh, so the um, Edge Transit here is uh, the limited edition variant. Uh, these are kind of exotic levels of fancy. Yeah. So you can't apply shaders to the ornaments. You have to remove the ornament first. Got it. Um, the ornaments will only be available up until the final shape launches. Yeah. Uh, or the, the limited edition variants. Makes sense. Yeah. So the base versions will continue to be available. All right. So there's the ultimate I was there version with the limited yeah. edition on there. But other than that, after the final shape launches, people will still be able to get these weapons and keep farming for them. Yeah. There's a, like, they have super cool visuals. They drop with uh, double perks in both trait columns, but nice. they don't have any other gameplay differences. So if you've got a great uh, base weapon, you don't need to go and get yeah, Just cosmetic. Weapons. Cosmetic only. Fair enough. Makes sense. Absolutely. All right. We're going to be getting, able to test these out in a little bit. So <clears throat> obviously, we're going to go through all of these here in just a bit. Chat, there's a taste of just a few. Uh, we're glad that you get a chance to go ahead and check it out. Um, but also, too, for the folks that want to go ahead and farm these rolls out, Kelsey, I believe you just mentioned attunement. Can you tell us a little bit more about that before we move on? Yes, I'd love to. So uh, one cool thing that you can do when completing these, these weapon quests once they're available at our site is attune to a weapon. So let's say that there's, there's a weapon you really want to drop. Uh, you can bend uh, luck in your favor and make it more likely for that weapon to appear. Um, so, for example, I can do that now. Let's do, let's do, let's do Recluse. Yeah. So. Chat seems to be pretty hyped on Recluse. <laughs> so, um, if you're looking around, you'll see there's all of these these shacks everywhere, which we just had an absolute blast uh, uh, working with and coming up with. Um, and once you've unlocked attunement, you can just freely do this at any time. You can you can change your attunement at any time. Um, you can choose which weapon has a higher chance of dropping. So I'm going to do it now. Okay. There we okay. go. Got our thumbs up. We're Get good. Get the affirmation from Shaxx. Never hurts. <laughs> yeah, I can always use more affirmations. From it Shaxx. never hurts, honestly. <laughs> he shouts them very effectively, I might add. Yes. Um, so, so yeah. Um, at any point, um, you can just visit another one. I could even just go and. You know, unattune and, and reattune to my heart's content. Just once, once you've once you've unlocked it, you can do that at any time. Awesome. So yeah, pick 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 your favorites that you want to chase, and and uh, you'll have a much higher chance of getting them. 
Excellent. All right. Obviously, the uh, the Hall of Champions has a lot in store. There's even more, obviously, chat than is even here, but uh, we see what you're saying in chat. I feel the electricity in the air. I should also note one more thing. Uh, you should all go out and farm with impunity to go ahead and get the rolls you want, ultimately, because with the arrival of the final shape, we'll indeed be adding 100 more vault slots. So go out there, grab the rolls, grab 27 edge transit, and hold on to them until you get a chance to Google which one has the god roll. All up to you, but we just wanted to let you know that with the arrival of the final shape, you'll be getting 100 more false slots. So go ahead and dive on in and grab whatever you want to go ahead and chase. I know you'll use this uh, Excellent, all right. Well, I think that's a solid tour of the Hall of Champions. Um, I think maybe at this point we go ahead and start dive on, diving on in with the Brave Arsenal. Tom, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'll hop in. I'll, let's uh, go clean out some lost sectors. There we go. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. We got some demos to run as well. All right, everyone. So this is as a quick look at the Hall of Champions as well. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and dive on in and look at the Brave Arsenal. Um, now, Chris, obviously you were intrinsically involved with kind of setting this whole thing up, with building the Brave Arsenal, deciding what was out there. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you guys landed on this iconic set of, of Destiny weapons for Into the Light? Yeah, and we all have our own favorite weapons internally uh, and wanted to make sure that we delivered on a ton of nostalgia for the whole uh, like Destiny 2 weapon set. Yeah. If you'd look on Reddit or Twitter, there are you know, hundreds of weapons that these could be. <laughs> yeah. We had to narrow it down to 12. It's like we couldn't reasonably fit any more into the activity. Yeah. We couldn't necessarily afford to make many more than that. Here we go. So it's, uh, yeah, a whole set of weapons from across uh, Destiny's history. A few recent ones, uh, most of them are from, from earlier in D2's yeah. history. So for those who have been terrorized by Blast Furnace and the Crucible, it's back now, Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah I'll see. Tom, let's go ahead and just kind of walk through these. Let's go ahead and take us at a, a hung jury I see next as well. Sure, I can just, do you want me to okay, just, I'll just mouse over them here. Blast Furnace, hung jury. Hung jury returns as well. Session. Uh -huh. For anyone that hasn't had a chance to dive into Deep Stone Crypt, they can get a, their hands on a raid weapon as well. Yeah, I should just touch on Succession. And yeah, a, please. Four variants in there as well. But these are fairly recent weapons, but yeah. they are... By default, you have to own the release that those raids came out in. So you have to own Beyond Light if you want to get Succession. You have right. to own Witch Queen if you want to get Forbearance. Yeah. The uh, Onslaught versions of these weapons, or the Brave Arsenal versions, are available to all players. So you get a taste of what, like, the raw power of a raid weapon. Yeah. Which, honestly, once you get Succession in your hand, suddenly everything feels so alive. Like <laughs> It's just, it's like a ton of bricks. Uh, let's see, we also have, there we go, Midnight Coup. Uh, for anyone who watched last week, thank you, Noah, as well, for going ahead and showing this off. Uh, Midnight Coup obviously makes an incredibly triumphant return. Oh, just look, actually, can you adjust it just so it shows the waves in the in the shader, Tom? There we go. <laughs> there we go. It's just, that never gets old, honestly. Nice. Harkens back to one of my favorite times in the Black Armory. Excellent. All right. So we have a, a full list here. So we've gone over uh, all of them in the primary slot. Um, let's go ahead and move on down to the uh, the green ammo selection as well. Obviously, Recluse, chat, you've all noticed that. We're just as happy that it's back as you are. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we got in store there. Luna's Howl, of course. Actually, in particular with Luna's Howl, I know we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but you know, these weapons are not necessarily their, their previous estate just kind of held in stasis, but you guys have brought them forward with new perks. You've kind of done some redesigns as well. Um, with Luna Howls in particular, you were mentioning that uh, the Magnificent Howl perk has undergone a rework as well. Uh, yeah, in its original shipping form, uh, that was way too strong because it would let you <laughs> Uh, two tap a guardian in PvP incredibly fast with the perk up. Yeah. Uh, you know, 180 RPM. So uh, we've brought Lunas Hell forward as a 140 RPM hand cannon, but it retains the precision frame, so it's super easy to control the recoil. Yeah. We've also redesigned the Magnificent Howl perk. Mm -hmm. uh, so that now lets you build up stacks of super bullets, um, a little bit reminiscent of, of Hawkman, yeah. uh, with precision final blows. Yeah. Uh, and then you can unleash those on Guardians to do massive damage. You can get a two-tap, but it requires a little bit more effort. Yeah. And obviously a very strong in PvE as well. Yeah. Got to bide your time and actually land those headshots. Yeah. I'm saying that mostly to myself in the mirror as I, <laughs> as I get upset for losing another round of trials, but... So we had uh, two hand cannons in this release, Midnight Coup and Lunas Howl. That's right, yeah. Um, we assigned those to two different designers. Yeah. And there's a competition going on to see which one is more popular or is more effective. Oh, really? So... So everyone out there in chat right now should let us know which one of those two ends up being their favorite. Yep. We have an actual debt to settle internally here by the sounds of it. <laughs> which one do you think is going to win, Chris? Uh, I'm a little biased. A little biased? Like, I, I have my uh, Midnight Coup from the Leviathan Raid still in my vault. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply attached to that weapon. Fair enough. All right. We'll see. Let's see here. All right. Uh, also, Elsie's. So actually, here's a cool one as well. Yeah. Uh, this is no longer the Stranger's Rifle. 
This is Elsie's rifle now. Yeah, Elsie's no longer a stranger. That's right, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a really iconic Destiny 1 weapon that everyone who played through the Destiny 1 campaign would have acquired as yeah. a stranger's rifle. Uh, it's come forward with as close to its original feel as we could manage, uh, updated for the Destiny 2 sandbox. It's got a ton of uh, cool new traits. It's really a very, very strong, uh, high impact yeah. pulse rifle. Um, it's running the Rewind Rounds perk, uh, oh, which, yeah. which we made for Bolt of Glass. Yeah. Uh, the D2 version, which harks back to the, um, the the original perks on the Stranger's Rifle in D1 as well. And this one already looks uh, filthy, if I might say, with Zen Moment and Desperado on there. Like Desperado, that's... yeah. <laughs> Did the room get colder, or what just happened, honestly? <laughs> uh, and also, too, so there's a new, actually, as long as we're there, um, Tom, if you wouldn't mind actually opening that back up, there's a new Origins trait, Origin trait, pardon me, as well on these. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, the Indomitability trait, uh, final blows with a light subclass equipped grenade, uh, grant grenade energy and with a dark subclass equipped grant melee energy. Excellent. Uh, so you get like that sort of duality and they're, they're reasonably strong books. Yeah, designed to keep you in the fight either way. Yep. Excellent, all right, Tom, let's go ahead and keep checking out. What else do we have in store here? Forbearance as well. So this is you were talking about obviously getting that taste of raid weapons. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys go ahead and bring Forbearance forward also to Into the Light? Like what, did you add new perks into the pool or what did you guys end up doing to kind of retain that classic feel? Yeah, so we wanted it to feel like uh, the Witch Queen version, mm -hmm. but with slightly updated perks. So the, the perk pools are fairly similar, but with a couple of spicy additions. So you'll notice Disruption Break left column on a a waveframe grenade launcher, super, super strong. Yeah. It's not something that you get on the original version. It's be disgusting. Yeah, but it's what? got all of the old classics. Yeah. It's got the, the new um, uh, indomitability origin trait instead of the soul drinker trait. And that's the same is true of any other weapons which had already shipped with origin traits. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks so good with that, that ornament on there. And of course, I think that was that a, a limited edition ornament on the recluse as well that you have over there? Yep. There's yeah, a base and look at the. Oh, the let's take a look. There we go. That's, again, the ultimate I was there. As you go ahead and begin your showdown with the witness, with the arrival of the final shape, it doesn't hurt to have one of these sitting on your hip, obviously, to go ahead and make a statement the moment you walk into the room. Yeah, and this one is the, uh, the curated version. The natural drops of mm -hmm. the limited edition variants do have um, double Double percal, percal. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And, of course, our beloved Edge Transit. Yeah, Couldn't keep we were, it away if we wanted to. When we were looking at the um, fan favorite weapons, like we wanted to bring forward some of the strongest weapons from Forsaken. Yeah. He has like fond memories of blasting away raid bosses with that transit. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. There's <laughs> amazing memes associated with this weapon. Yeah. We actually brought it forward as one of the strongest uh, heavy ammo grenade launches. In yeah. The I was going to say, we were talking about that earlier. You're saying this one just hits like an absolute ton of bricks now. Oh, yeah. You can see some of the perks there. It's, uh, it's pretty wild. I mean, honestly, yeah, this is already looking pretty good. This is one that would obviously find a home in my loadout. My Void one specifically, but I'm also picky about that kind of thing. Uh, all right, what else do we have here in this bottom row? The one and only, the Falling Guillotine. Now, actually, one thing that, that you mentioned uh, as we were kind of talking about this earlier as well that was kind of cool is this is also going to be probably the first uh, sword outside of those available in Crota's End, I believe, um, that has sword logic on it as well. Uh, yeah, that's right. Role with sword it seemed like a great opportunity to uh, put that perk on something that isn't from that raid and yeah. a little bit earlier than we would normally put uh, raid perks onto a new weapon. Yeah. I'm also going to echo like chat here for a second. Is that Eager Edge I see on there? That is an Eager Edge, yeah. Okay. It'll only be the second sword outside of um, 30th anniversary. Yeah. To ha have access to that. It would trait. basically just be the Slammer and then the, uh, the Falling Guillotine yeah, from. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, and this one has like the classic Void perk. Uh, combo of a uh, repulsive brace, yeah. destabilizing rounds. It's good fun, and a lot, lot of other strong. It just doesn't get old, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, we're also joined by the hammerhead. Hammerhead. The hammerhead. Honestly, it's as long as we're as long as you're dipping your toe into the world of the Black Armory. This is obviously one that has to come forward. Everyone's favorite legendary machine gun. Yeah, seriously. It's, you can't go past it. It just from the sound of the rate of fire, everything about it just is is one that lives on in my memories and my dream journals. Honestly, at this point. Yeah. Uh, this is looking fantastic. All right, so we have a whole cast of characters. Now, Tom, you've got some uh, some loadouts set up. You've got some Lost Sectors that you're going to go ahead and start diving in on. Um, I vote you go in there and start tearing it up. <laughs> We're already there. Okay, that's fantastic. The classic mountaintop recluse combo here. Yeah. And there's some new stuff with uh, mountaintop, too, where you can 
Rocket jump. <laughs> That's right. So I was actually, I'm so glad we got to that point this early because uh, one of the things that was really cool about sort of seeing this development process behind the scenes was, you know, obviously one of the core tenants was to make sure that you're retaining that classic feel of these weapons and kind of what yeah. made them so great to begin with. But you've kind of done some redesigns and expanded even just on the on the loot pool, or pardon me, on the perp pool rather. Um, how did you guys kind of go about the process of sort of rebuilding these weapons for this modern era of Destiny? Yeah, I mean, we held off on bringing Mountaintop uh, into the sort of modern destiny because it was just way too strong in both PvP and in PvE. Yeah. Uh, in PvP, it was like a, a pretty unpleasant meta when Mountaintop was part of everyone's <laughs> loadout, so we, we definitely didn't want it to be able to one-hit kill, uh, even with a direct hit in PvP anymore. Fair. So we've reduced that a little bit. Uh, but we also um, saw how excited people were for the Danger Zone rocket launcher perk, uh, yeah. launching you into the air. So we've made that part of the base behavior of the new um, micro missile frame grenade launcher intrinsic. Yeah. So they do super um, low self damage and give yourself a massive physics impulse. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the Team Fortress 2 soldier mains are just suddenly dusting off yeah. their rocket launchers yeah. in real time right now, obviously. Uh, so obviously, too, is you know going ahead and adding just not only to the the perp pool, but kind of the intrinsic feel of these weapons. Uh, were there any others in particular when you guys were working on them where you're like, yes, this is this is how this change needs to go? Like obviously, yeah. magnificent howl got a change, but is there anything else in that pool that feels like it was really kind of a cool leap forward for these weapons? Uh, I think blast furnace is a good example because the yeah. black armory version rolled with scopes, yeah. uh, which like everyone would just. Pick the best scope. Like internally, we felt like the Rasmussen ISA yeah. scope was uh, like by far the best. Really, really clean. Yeah. Um, and with the changes to uh, damage fall off on weapons, zoom doesn't matter that much anymore anyway. Yeah. So it comes pre-equipped with that scope geometry, but it can roll barrels instead. So you get all the benefits of stats. Oh, awesome. Stats are already pretty juiced. Yeah. Uh, but you have that that classic scope geo. Actually, also, too, to channel chat one more time, mm -hmm. uh, as a quick heads up as well, these weapons, while they won't be craftable, they are going to be enhanceable, is that correct? Correct, yeah. So uh, these weapons will retroactively be enhanceable when the final shape comes out. So any drops that you get uh, during this initial period, you'll be able to enhance them. Excellent, okay. So you want to make sure to really hold on to those god rolls that light.gg went ahead and told you about. Yeah. All right, so Tom, you have you've swapped your loadout now. Is this blast furnace we see you work? Yeah, working? you were just talking about blast furnace, so I, I thought I'd hop over to it. It's thematic, yeah. It's nice and smooth, like it always was. <laughs> Uh, Kelsey, actually, too, on, on your side, you know, obviously having this new tapestry of rewards to work with has been pretty exciting. As you kind of went ahead and sort of hatched your plans of how players would go about getting these, kind of what role did, did these weapons play, I guess, in the overall reward structure? Yeah, of course. Uh, so we wanted the rewards of this release to be all about the weapons. Like yeah. The shining stars, they're, they're awesome. Um, so uh, I saw people were asking a little bit about what we're going to be getting from Onslaught. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of chests in there, um, and every single chest has a weapon in it, um, and all of those chests can, uh, can, can react to attunement. So if you attune to a weapon, Anytime you see a chest, it's gonna happen. So Excellent. Uh, every every way every set, not every wave, that'd be crazy. Every every <laughs> set, uh, there's a chest with a weapon in it. If you do it at higher difficulty, there yeah. are two chests. They both have weapons in them. And if you keep the ADU alive throughout the entirety of onslaught, there's yeah. another bonus chest available. Um, so you can get a lot. If you if you just keep yourself kicking and, yeah. and get all the way through there, keep the ADU up. Uh, there's a lot of guns to be had. So those folks who are going to dive into the Legend 50 Wave version of Onslaught are going to be well rewarded for those efforts. <laughs> That's, I, I'm asking partially for myself, obviously, as well, and my fire team at home who might be listening. <laughs> uh, to, the weapons you know, team is really excited about attunement because it, like, yeah. it uh, gives players some control over the drops that they get, mm -hmm. but it retains the excitement of those drops. Like, you will get your like blast furnace dropping from the chest. You don't have to go and focus it or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, we love that. Actually, also too is, you know, you guys are also players of the game. Chris, oh, yeah. were there any roles or weapons in particular where it was just your personal favorite that you had a lot of fun with in a play test or? Probably of these weapons, my favorite is blast furnace. Yeah. Uh, with that, that classic scope and uh, the role that I've got on mine, the board that I'm going to try and get in retail, yeah. is uh, Head Seeker Kill Clip, which oh. is like just really nasty in PvP. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'll put another few hundred hours uh, in the <laughs> I'll be right there with you, honestly. The moment I can put Dead Man's Tail down again, then that <laughs> will be the one that'll pick up immediately after. 
<clears throat> uh, Kelsey, also too, is you know, I know we were talking a little bit earlier. You've been deep into the onslaught playtests as well. So that means in addition to the Brave Arsenal, you've got everything else at your beck and call. What are some <laughs> cool builds you've been working on, honestly, to go ahead and really emphasize these new weapons? Yeah, um, I've been I've been really enjoying uh, Solar, Solar Warlock I found is really, really fun in Onslaught because you can find a lane and just completely nuke it if you get your like unlimited grenades going. You can just <laughs> completely destroy it. So I've been really partial to uh, Luna's Howl. Uh, I, <laughs> fair. Um, yeah, I, I tend to get a little uh, a little feral, a little too excited. So I was having like heal clip on it or something can, uh, can give me that, that extra staying power I need to keep that ADU up. <laughs> it's like it's part of you got to be in the fight as much as you possibly can and I say that <clears throat> partially as a void hunter who crutches on invisibility and runs away <laughs> right away so I understand and respect the hustle that I don't end up having <laughs> uh, also too we got <clears throat> a question from chat uh, from Lil Camino, I think is how you pronounce the name. My, my mistake if you, if you get it correct. Um, but just to reiterate, uh, will these weapons be attainable after the final shape arrives? Uh, yes, the base weapons will be, mm -hmm. uh, but the limited edition variants with those uh, sweet ornaments will not. Excellent. All right. So again, make sure you go ahead and dive on in once uh, Into the Light is here. and Make sure you get that, that I was there card, more or less. At least, again, speaking for myself. Uh, so also too is I heard you guys mention briefly curated roles as well because kind of like a part of the the quest uh, process was it with Shax or our site rather uh, with our site yeah thank you that's right so is this ones that you guys have set up where it's like this is this is the go-to role this is our from our opinion like one of our favorites or um, what was the process of kind of building those curated roles uh, yeah we try to deliver something which is like an extremely good role mm -hmm. not necessarily the single perfect role, because we want you to have a reason to go in and get excited for those drops. Yeah. Um, but like we would say, they're a you know, 70, 80 percent god roll. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. On the way, certainly. Yeah. And also too, is remember everyone, we're getting a hundred more vault slots once the final shape comes out. So go ahead and just farm away. Now's the time. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Kelsey, were you going to say something more? Yeah. We also just w wanted to make sure people weren't completely at the mercy of RNG when it comes to getting these limited edition variants. Mm -hmm. So if you log in, you do those quests at our site, um, you can get. One guaranteed copy of a limited edition of each weapon with a, with that curated tool. Yeah. See, we're getting, again, I, I think, obviously, Tom is here in the heat of battle, so to speak, but um, the uh, the origin trait, we just got another question about, actually. Mm. So, for the folks at home, it is, it's indomitability, or? Yes. Thank you, all right. And that one, uh, can you, again, walk through that, that origin trait for us one more time? Uh, yeah, so on, on final blows, it grants you uh, grenade energy if you're running a light subclass. Oh, here we go, we got it on screen. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, which would be Arc Void or Solo, mm -hmm. uh, or Melee Energy if you're running a Darkness subclass, which would be Stasis Smart. or Strand. Got it, okay. So I can go in there as a Stasis Man and just throw all the shurikens I possibly have. Yeah, There's a more technical thing for that, I'm sorry, I got it wrong <laughs> out of the gate. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, and also too, actually, uh, you know, we talked kind of at the beginning about what it was like to sort of pare down this list mm. of, of weapons down to 12. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? I can't imagine it was anywhere near simple. <laughs> 12 was a really small number when you're looking at that, uh, that set of weapons. And yeah. if we'd gone by uh, lists on the internet or even internally, yeah. it could easily have ended up being half hand cannons. We had to <laughs> restrict ourselves to two. Fair. There were a lot that could easily have made the cut that we yeah. just, just couldn't. We just couldn't fit them in. That's fair. I mean, honestly, though, yeah. between Midnight Coup and Luna's Howl, like a very, very solid cast to go ahead and come out of the gate here with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really strong. And they, yeah, uh, we definitely wanted to get that, that spread of experience across the, the first few years of Destiny 2 as well. Yeah, honestly. And also, too, is even, you know, recalling all the way back to the Black Armory. You know, that's, I think, a, a set of weapons that so many of us think back to so fondly. Um, you know, again, I think one of the goals here was to go ahead and retain that original feel. Um, you know, you guys went ahead and added in a bunch of new perks. Can you tell us what that process was? Was like in terms of making sure those perks matched up with that feel of the weapon? Yeah, I and mean, in cases where we have multiple weapons in the same archetype shipping, so we've got two pulse rifles, two hand cannons, uh, we assigned those to different designers and like made sure that the, uh, the roles that they occupy in the sandbox were sufficiently different. Um, we also would look at the most popular roles that the weapons had originally and make sure that those still appear um, on the weapons of men having to redesign some perks, which would be too strong in today's sandbox, Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, and then introducing, like when you, when you go and you look at uh, a blast bonus in your vault or something, you're like, man, I wish I could roll X perk that came out after that, right? Like, yeah. And made sure we put a few of those in there as well. Yeah. And there's also, uh, I'm not sure if we've seen it on screen yet, but there's a new perk that'll be joining this pool as well, won't there? Uh, yeah, there is. There's, uh, in this build, it's called Blast Stand. Uh, the shipping name is different. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a pretty sweet perk. If we could bring up the um, description of that when Tom is out of danger. 
Which weapon is that? Uh, there was one, it was on Blast Furnace, I think. Yeah. Let me get yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, well, we'll, let, we'll let him defend himself <laughs> yes. briefly. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a, a couple questions from chat as well. Um, uh, so there's one that asks, uh, Flows Knuckles, I believe. There we go. Can we grind Onslaught multiple times for multiple drops? I'm assuming this is just go ahead and dive on it and grind to your heart's content. Yes, you'll be getting you'll get it, getting weapons every run. You'll also be getting uh, currency from shacks that mm -hmm. you can you can bring back and you can uh, throw in that chest that I showed you, so you can just keep opening that chest. Uh, so just, yeah, just keep going. Dive on it, honestly. Yeah, go ahead and chase that roll, whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, also, too, one more quick question from chat. Uh, Mega12358, pardon me, Mega, uh, asks, can you take the limited edition ornament off and put it on another copy of the weapon, or is it just on that one weapon? So you can remove it, you can't put it on something else. Cool. It's locked to the weapon that it dropped on. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, honestly, when it looks that good, you just gotta go ahead and stick with what you got, you know? <laughs> yeah, if players have a favorite shader that they want to put on a weapon, they can remove it and put the shader on. Yeah, that's true. You can't shade the ornament. You can go ahead and photo finish it up to your heart's yeah, content, yeah. obviously, that opportunity. Or super black, obviously, when the time arrives. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. So, Tom, what are you running right now? I've just been hopping around with all the weapons here. Now I've got Blast Furnace and Elsie's rifle on. I know double primary isn't always meta, but... <laughs> We're going to make it meta for the sake of this. They're both pretty, lost pretty, pretty solid weapons. <laughs> the purposes of illustration. No, here's that new perk that you both were talking about, Last Stand, on Again, reminder, this Blast name Furnace. will be changing in, in the live version. Yep. Yeah, so weapon final grows, blows grant bonus damage. Uh, melee and grenade final blows grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. So once you get this perk really rolling, it's very strong. Yeah. You can sustain it. Nice way to go ahead and clear out a bunch of red bars and then take down that yellow bar with ease if yep. you go ahead and do everything correctly. Yeah, it ties nicely into the origin trait as well, because the origin trait yeah. grants you energy for your abilities, and then you get uh, bonus damage for getting ability final blows. Yeah, it really creates, <clears throat> creates that loop, honestly. You just become yeah. the self-fulfilling prophecy of death at that point, which, as a guardian, is never a bad place <laughs> to find yourself, frankly. Uh, let's see here. Actually, also, too, is, you know, I know we touched, obviously, on Chris's personal favorite being Blast Virtus. Kelsey, was there anything uh, when you saw this land back on the list of the Brave Arsenal where you were like, finally, that one's back? Mm. I, was, I, was, I was real excited about Linda's Hell. Linda's Hell. <laughs> I mean, that's just <laughs> smart, honestly. That just makes sense. <laughs> Tom, how about you? Is there anything in particular that, that you know, obviously, having taken such a, a big hand in helping design and sort of define all this stuff, um, you know, what are your, your favorite weapons and roles that have come out of this? I'm, I'm pretty pretty basic, pretty easy. I, I really am excited about Recluse uh, and, and, and Mountaintop. Yeah. Like, I, I just love that combo of being able to, like, get in close with a, an SMG and get, get the damage perk going and feeling really powerful, then being able to switch to the grenade launcher and fire off some, like, little mini rockets and be able to play around with getting a little more airborne. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, like, it's just fun. I can already imagine some strand hunter doing that above me and then immediately yeah. diving on top of me at the and, and I look forward to like, you know, the accidentally not accidentally blowing myself up, but it's a lot harder to do now. Like I, I remember with Mountaintop back in the day, I, I would like I would just like shoot my feet on purpose <laughs> and like it was usually like an instant death. And so you can really uh, you get a lot more up close and personal with it. Yeah, let's see. Fit nicely into a lot of builds. Honestly, I can already see a Tommy's matchbook build with that. <laughs> just floating up there in the sky as a warlock, just murdering everyone. But that is to say, now there's an opportunity for more than just warlocks to be the floating weapon platforms out there in the game. Yeah. I know, Kelsey, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we can share, <laughs> yes. we can share the abilities. Uh, Particularly uh, with the redesign of uh, Manticore, there's a, a fun strategy, I don't know how super effective it is, but yeah. like mountaintop to launch yourself way up into the air yeah. and switch over to <laughs> Manticore, yeah. and now you can just hover around. Just seems like a, a fever dream I had one time, honestly. Uh, also, too, for the folks at home that may not have seen the Manticore uh, kind of redesign, can you tell us a little bit, too, about how the, the intrinsic perk on that works now? Uh, yeah, so it's the base functionality of the way you use the weapon is fairly similar. We've uh, tightened up uh, its activation, so it will no longer activate if you're running downstairs and that kind of thing, which is pretty irritating. Uh, you can also just deactivate it by holding reload, and it will do that quick special reload animation oh, very nice. before you have to wait for it to expire or um, like switch off the weapon. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, catalyst, instead of just giving you uh, damage resistance, now gives you a void overshield, uh, which 
Oh, nice. Of course, also gives you damage resistance, but yeah. can tie into void builds uh, in a, a pretty synergistic way. Very nice, honestly. Yeah, between that, Devour, the whole nine, obviously, this could be a lot of uh, oh, yeah. mobile weapon. Survivability as well. It also uh, decreases enemy accuracy against you, similar to the always on time Sparrow. So yeah. you've got a ton more um, like damage resistance, you've got an overshield, and enemies are missing you all the time. So it's uh, combined with being able to launch yourself up into the air easily with mountaintop. It's, yeah. It's good fun. That's also too, actually. Uh, we got a question from chat that is, what's the difference between uh, the new perk um, mm -hmm. and uh, Golden Tricorn? They sound pretty similar. Uh, they do have kind of similar functionality. The big one is that the Golden Tricorn bonus is large, but uh, doesn't stack mm. once you get it. So um, the uptime on uh, the new perk whose name I can't remember. Yep. It's, not, it's not in this book, <laughs> um, Is that the, up, the uptime is higher. Excellent, uh, okay. Makes sense. Uh, also, too, it's, uh, we got another chat as well. Uh, chat question for me, I should say. Uh, will the weapon ornaments for Luna's Howl and the Recluse be equipable for the new versions of those weapons? Uh, yes, they will. Oh, awesome. Both for the, uh, the base versions and for the variants, you can equip any ornaments that you've got. Um, players have already noticed that uh, some of those show are showing up later in the season yeah. uh, in the Bright Dust Storm. So for anyone out there that might uh, go ahead and check through the databases, they might have noticed something potentially. Yep. Yeah, we can't say yes or no, but maybe. Firm maybe, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. All right, so we're doing a pretty good job here. Tom, I got to say, uh, it seems like you're making some pretty good, quick work of these lost sectors. Yeah, I mean, it's like he's played them before. Maybe once or twice, potentially. You never know. It did work on EDZ. It's been a while, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, actually, also, too, is, you know, as, as you've kind of been helping sort of build a lot of, of what Into the Light is going to be, um, you know, what was the role that these weapons played? Like, why is, why is Shax choosing now to go ahead and re-equip us with this particular set of antiquities? And part of the idea is that it's like this forbidden arsenal, right? The things that aren't, uh, that, that we've kind of set aside, at least in the Crucible and other spaces, and and now in this, this kind of dire time with, with our backs against the wall, we need to you know, kind of set aside uh, th those uh, conventions and, and you know, really uh, take ad every advantage we can in the fight against the witness. And, and kind of like you know, having players in this moment you know, with Into the Light, you know, it's, it's, it's a great time to hop in and play if you haven't been playing or uh, if, if you want to catch up, and we're going to give you the weapons you need to be ready for the final shape. Like, as long as you show up every week, you, you do the work, uh, you're going to get like an incredible arsenal. Yeah, particularly also, if you had been like looking at some of the uh, meta heavy grenade launchers, yeah. you can just walk in and get extra in transit and like be like competitive already. Yeah. yeah. So, and also too, uh, I just got word from back at home that uh, also Noah is apparently back at home after last week's stream in chat cheering everyone on. So if everyone out there wants to give him a quick yeah, great in chat, now's the time. <laughs> Alrighty. I really like auto loading hoster on the mountaintop. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's I mean it's I've got strong. yeah, I've got a, a fighting lion part in our dust loadout that obviously hinges pretty heavily on auto loading holster because I never want to stop shooting any grenades. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm sorry everyone. <laughs> We're getting some love for no in the chat. Alright, love to see it. Uh, so also too, actually, you know, over the course of, of developing kind of this new reward structure, was there anything about it where you're like, all right, this is this is the moment. Like onslaught is set up just right. Like what was it like, kind of building this structure for players to go ahead and just reinvest in? I guess. Yeah, I think when we finally got the loot explosion going, yeah, there was this whole conversation and how we wanted to feel when you open the chest and all this stuff and, and all these people working together doing tech stuff to make sure it all. It all worked great and everyone doing their part and then you know finally getting in there and just just running through and seeing everything just yeah <laughs> like I guess all of your work just like flying through the air <laughs> space was just really satisfying and it really felt really felt like it was coming together I'm also really partial to when we start getting um, more icons and world art coming in the space really started to feel tangible when Shax finally had the guns in his hands in the and yeah. in the, in the, <laughs> all the hollow Shax is for a while they're just like that's like right. this, you know? Did you guys have that vision of the hollow shacks like right away? You were like, this is how we want it to be, or was it just, what was the evolution of that space like when you guys were building it? We got to, oh, it was really fun working with World Art and all this stuff. Um, it, it, we had a bunch of people in the room, everyone who's dedicated to the space in some capacity, and we were just brainstorming together and, and, and laughing and coming up with all these, these fun ideas. So it was a huge collaborative process, and I think that's what's so magical about working in games, is you get to work with all these people who know all these things that you don't. 
and make something so cool and awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, also, too, we got one more quick question from chat that caught my eye. Uh, is the Master of Arms perk as powerful as before? Uh, no, it's had to be toned down a little bit. Fair, yeah. Yeah, it's still very strong. Um, but yeah, that, that original version is pretty wild. Kind of in a league of its own, certainly. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tom. So what's your, uh, your, what's, your, what's your strat right now? Is it basically just Old West Gunslinger? Yeah, I mean, I... I, I haven't been having a chance to play with all these guns either, <laughs> so I'm just having fun over here. Like you guys can, you can do your stream over there. I'm just gonna play uh, with, uh, with Midnight Coup here, which just oh, it just feels so snappy and crispy. <laughs> like it just gotta point it in the right direction. It this does has, a lot of the work. Uh, explosive rounds and kinetic tremors. Is that what it has? Or? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like you can just, I, you don't even really need to be that accurate, I guess, with this this <laughs> roll. I can just kind of shoot around enemies. And like a does. dance, like in the old west. <laughs> Pretty sure yeah. this is still the highest aim assist of any legendary hand cannon in the game, too. Oh, is that so? Okay. Yeah. That's. What are some roles, by the way? So obviously, I think you know they, they each kind of have their different PvP and PVE flavors. But in in the PVE trenches, are there any roles in particular with this new kind of set of perks that you were really caught off guard by or surprised by? I mean, Firefly Kinetic Tremors is really really strong. I think that yeah. was actually the role that uh, Noah was running yeah. last week. Yeah, he was making it look pretty good, thankfully. Yeah, he's smart. <laughs> and Noah's all right at the game, as it turns out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I think uh, the role that we've got here on Edge Transit, uh, which is Cascade Point Left Column. Yeah. Uh, being able to just like mag dump yeah. uh, a whole drum grenade launcher uh, is really strong. Yeah. The uh, burst damage potential is wild. Uh, and also, too, actually, uh, another question from chat. To get the double perk rolls on the weapons, yeah. do you have to do higher level onslaughts, or is there a chance for them to drop the double perks in each column regardless? Uh, there is always a chance. Um, those are the, the limited edition variants, yeah. Yeah. And also, too, just a, a quick reminder is the, the quests from Shaq, or on, on, from our site, rather. Those ones have a higher chance of giving you uh, one of the limited edition variants, or? Those give you the curated ones, right? The yes, curated? those that's are the right. curated ones. So pretty much, that's just a, that's a guarantee that you can get them. But anytime you get a brave weapon, there's a chance that it will it will have the double perks and the the, the awesome appearance on it. So Very cool. that was actually a really fun thing when once it kind of got that implemented, playing through the first time, you just naturally got one. Yeah. Like you'll be in a playtest time. Oh, I, I got one. I got yeah. a limited edition one. It's just a really fun. It's kind of even just that excitement of like when you're you know out there doing a dungeon farm or whatever the case is, and you're checking through all the guns that are sitting in your mailbox, and you're just like, oh, that initial set of rolls is pretty cool, and then you click in and you're like, wait, I can curate this to exactly what I want it to be. <laughs> like that moment's always pretty rewarding, honestly. Uh, so obviously, yes. So uh, as a quick reminder to everyone in chat, so the um, the brave arsenal will be able to drop from onslaught at every stage. Was it every ten levels? Yes, every set. Excellent. Okay, set. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. See, this is we have the experts here, obviously. <laughs> uh, all right, Tom. What's what's next on the list? Which which lost sector is going to wilt against your powers? I think I'm gonna go and I don't know what it's called, but it's on the top of the little rocks here. I think right is that that's that's where it's at. I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, you so go. you just go ahead and drop on down in. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Those fallen aren't going to be safe <laughs> for long. Yeah. Can't die from full damage anymore. It's true. That would. Who could possibly do that? That's what we have the mountaintop to do, <laughs> or to, to use for rather to get those kills on ourselves. <laughs> oh, wrong way. <laughs> this is the right way. Uh, and actually, also too. So, a lot of questions in chat about the uh, the, the pools of perks that are going to be be available, the weapons that are going to be available. Uh, you and your team over on the weapons team have also gone ahead and authored a blog that will be hitting Bungie.net tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's going to list out all of the weapons and uh, all of the perks that can appear on them. So, yeah. uh, no mystery about the, the perk that was up tomorrow. Yeah. So there will be uh, plenty of opportunities for all the build crafters out there to go ahead and go nuts and kind of imagine their most exciting opportunities, really. <laughs> Uh, actually, so also too, you know, we've talked a lot about the Brave Arsenal. Let's go ahead and touch on um, the the Parade set again. Um, what was kind of the inspiration behind that set and kind of bringing it forward now? This is kind of like a first full, full circle moment, rather than I know Tom was mentioning. But you know, why is Shax choosing now to equip us with this armor set? Uh, I frankly wasn't as as involved in those kind of conversations. No, it's okay. We actually, it was actually really really uh, here we go. Fun. Uh, oh, <laughs> nice. beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kind of waiting to see like how. Like how we're gonna end up looking in the end because we weren't yeah. really sure right away which armor set we were getting. And Here we, were just we go. So excited to yep. see him in the 
see him in the chest. Yeah. Yeah, it was I think honestly that first look at them in the uh in the key art, you know. Obviously there was an initial glimpse. Yeah. And it's weird because even as good as they looked, they were almost like everyone was just immediately captivated by Onslaught, immediately captivated by like, is that is that Blast Furnace in that Warlock's hands? Who knows? If you're trying to bring back players' favorites, like there is so much nostalgia for that uh, parade armor set. Yeah. Like, bring that back and updating it a little bit. Like yeah. I still run the um the parade armor set uh, on, on my character from yeah. time to time. So Gotta have that classic look, obviously. Yeah. And obviously getting a chance to go ahead and chase down Super Black doesn't hurt either. Mm -hmm. Looks very cool when you break it out of containment. <laughs> Won't say much. Excellent, alrighty. Uh, so let's go ahead and take one more quick run through. So this, uh, is there anything else actually? So I know we've had a chance to walk through the Brave Arsenal. Uh, Tom, in particular on your side, um, you know, we've gone ahead and kind of gone around the horn over here. Uh, is there anything about this, this kind of new set of weapons and sort of the role they play and into the light that, that's got you excited about kind of the overall sandbox now that we're going to have available to us? I'm really excited about the, 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 a lot of these weapons are, 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 they're not god rolls, but they're pretty close to it. Like if you show up uh, every week and you do the weekly quest, you're going to get something that is really pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's going to be like, for example, just looking at like the hammerhead here, it's got rampage and killing tally on it. That, that's just incredible. Never stops like for PVE, yeah, it just never stops firing, right? Yeah. Like, and then you're also increasing damage every time you take an enemy out, which is cool. And I could, I could look at each one of these weapons too, and they, they like, um, I think we might have glossed over it earlier, but the edge transit with cascade point, like you get a kill and then you can dump the whole mag in like two or three seconds, which is, is really <laughs> powerful. And I think people are gonna find a lot of great synergies between these weapons. Like I was even, yeah, like Mountaintop, uh, Recluse and Cascade, uh, Edge Transit felt great. Like I could like use the SMG, uh, like, 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 while my, my Mountaintop is reloading and then, and then like getting kills with those activates Cascade Point and I can swap over and dump the mag for Edge Transit. And like I could see similar things with Hammerhead uh, and Forbearance or um, with uh, Elsie's Rifle. Yeah. Um, and then like, there's also just some some classic weapons here that I really miss. That I'm I'm really excited for Blast Furnace to be back, and I'm excited to see what it does to the meta with these being like relevant in the power game again, and being something that is accessible to to, to, to players new and old. Yeah, someone who spends a lot of time in the Crucible. Uh, I'm terrified already. <laughs> Proctor, thank you very much for all the hard work on that. <laughs> see you and yours, obviously. Uh, all right, so I think we're probably getting to a point now. We've gone ahead and checked out the, uh, the the rewards, we've checked out the new social space, we've checked out the Brave Arsenal. Um, it's probably about time for us to go ahead and start wrapping things up here. Uh, Mr. Tom Farnsworth, when you get an opportunity, feel free to go ahead and rejoin us. Relinquish your hold from the throne world, obviously. Uh, that was, this is so fast, your jump ship yeah, right, was right in right, orbit, wasn't it? Right here. Uh, I, I hear it's lovely <laughs> this time of year out there in the throne world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, everyone's, at Noah and uh, Kelsey have been keeping it warm for me in there. In That's the true, all right, fair <laughs> enough, yeah. And again, we can use some sword logic later to expand it when the time comes, yeah. but for right now, we've gone ahead and done our job. Uh, well, for starters, uh, thank you all so much for taking time to join us to talk us through, obviously, the, the, champ the Hall of Champions, talk us through the Brave Arsenal, through everything with Into the Light. Uh, it's been a great show. So thank you guys for starters for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Absolutely, and also to, uh, as a quick reminder again to everyone, uh, we'll be back next week, the same Bungie time, same Bungie place, to, to have another live stream about everything, or some more stuff coming with Destiny 2 Into the Light, uh, including some exotic mission, uh, some, pardon me, some exotic mission content and the craftable weapons that'll be available to them. Chat, I saw you mentioning some stuff about that potentially, so come back next week. Uh, also, we'll be gonna, gonna go ahead and walk through the PVP map pack as well, so if you wanna see everything that's gonna be coming in those three maps, Next week will be your time, and uh, there might be a few more additional surprises that we'll have in store for you. Never know, but, and also too, the final thing we're gonna go ahead and make sure you close with is, as a quick reminder, of course, with the arrival of the final shape, you'll be able to get 100 more slots in your vault. Uh, as you can go ahead and see here on camera, we put it to good use ourselves. We had some edge transit rolls. We knew that this was the time and place to go ahead and slot them on there, in there. Uh, so we now have those, thankfully, uh, in safekeeping now for the arrival of the witness. We're ready. Never hurts. All right, everyone. Well, thank you all so much for taking time, taking the time to join us today. Uh, we'll see you back here next week at the same bungee time, same bungee place. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you all star side.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's good to see you all. Welcome to our third of three developer live streams to talk about all the cool stuff coming up with Destiny 2 Into the Light. Uh, my name's Andy. I work on the social media team here at Bungie, and we've got an awesome set of, of topics to go ahead and cover today. But first things first, we want to win it. We wanted to go ahead and remind you guys of one clarification we made. For starters, all of the weapons in the Brave Arsenal will now be releasing on April 30th. So just as a quick reminder, all of that weapon, all those weapons will be available for you to farm over the course of Onslaught. Uh, there's many ways with which you can go about it. For starters, obviously, you can go ahead and attune yourself to a weapon, so whether you want to go ahead and grab that recluse that you've had your eye on for so long, you've got the opportunity to go ahead and do that uh, over the course of Onslaught. Uh, also, there's going to be the chest up by Shax as well, so you can go ahead and farm some additional rolls there, but worry not, you'll have plenty of chances to dive in, grab the weapons you want, whether it be through our site's quest lines or otherwise, uh, those opportunities will be wide open and available. But we have a whole new set of topics to discuss today, uh, including some reprise exotic missions, a look at the PvP map pack, and a couple more details at the end that we'll go ahead and share with you in just a bit. Uh, but as usual, it won't just be me talking through it, so let's go ahead and tell you about the wonderful folks I have here just to my left, some incredible developers here at Bungie. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the gentleman here to my left, friend of the show, one and only Mr. Tom Farnsworth, senior design leader here at Bungie. Tom, welcome back. I'm back, I keep bringing me back. I know, it's, come on, you're the best, we, can't, we couldn't possibly <laughs> let you go. No, I, I, of course, I'm the creative lead for Into the Light, yeah. but we're yeah, really here to talk about all the great work the team has done and these individuals here uh, with us today. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some exotic missions, yes. uh, some rewards associated with them, uh, and some PvP stuff. So let's let's dive in. Let's yeah. let's talk to everybody else here. Great stuff. We also have now sitting just next to Tom as well. We have Rob Adams, one of the art directors here at Bungie, uh, and kind of the person to help come up with the concept of Into the Light. Rob, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited Absolutely. to be here. Yeah, no, it's good to have you. We have a lot of fun stuff. We were talking before the show about a lot of cool stuff. We'll have plenty of fun details to dive into here in just a little bit. Uh, and of course, the one and only Willie Chang, activity designer here at Bungie. Uh, how are you doing, Willie? Good morning. I'm doing well. Uh, for the folks at home that may not be familiar with you or your work, uh, what do you do here at Bungie, if you don't mind my asking? I'm an activity designer uh, for Into the Light. I worked on the Zero Hour Reprise. Excellent. Well, with that, we, uh, we may as well start diving into the show at hand. We have a lot of cool stuff to start with. Uh, in addition to, like we mentioned, some awesome reprise exotic missions, including The Whisper and Zero Hour, which will both uh, feature, pardon me, craftable versions of each weapon. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and start at the top with The Whisper. Uh, we've had a chance to go ahead and kind of pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and start from the very top. Uh, Rob, you were there when it all started. Why did Bungie make The Whisper to begin with? Well, I think in the first few months of D2, I want to say like the first three to five months, we felt like there weren't enough secrets in the game. It felt like the game was pretty well known, mm -hmm. you know, and, and kind of like discovered. Mm -hmm. And it just needed some big secret to be found by the players. And we thought that that would excite uh, our community quite a bit. Like, it would, it would just go over really well. We, we hoped it would, at least. Yeah. And we had all this nostalgia for the Vault of Glass and Black Spindle. I mean, one day we were just sitting in a conference room and we we're like, what if we just made another Black Spindle mission, but we made it a lot bigger, Yeah. right? Yeah. Speaking of, uh, we've got here on screen uh, kind of some, if we can call it as such, yeah. original concept art, uh -huh. you'd say, for The Whisper? Yeah, it's concept art. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Uh, so, well, that's actually the very first whiteboard drawing when we got all excited and we ran and found a conference room and we started, you know, drawing what this could do, yeah. what we would want to build. And really, this kind of shows some of the magic uh, formula, you know, like we, we had a, a contract, really, that we, we called it a contract. And, <laughs> and this was an unspoken agreement between us as devs and the hardcore, super engaged players. Yeah. And it really was, if you can pass a test where your mind is going to be tested, mm -hmm. your fighting, right? Yeah. Uh, is going to be tested, and you're going to be able to pass these tests, right? Yeah. Your movement, your mind, your fighting. Yeah. If you can get past these tests, you're going to be rewarded with great power. Yeah. And that was the contract. And so one of the other things we did, and you can see it up here in the uh, upper left, yeah. is there's a little crack, and then the path continues. Yeah. And that, you know, that's the red herring. And so we thought, well, rather than lead players by the nose and have a bunch of narrative and and make it really obvious what you're supposed to do. Yeah. What if they get into this mysterious place and they don't know what to do? Mm -hmm. And when they go down the path that they think is right, it's not. Yeah. You know, and they go blazing right past the actual opening. Yeah. And so we knew that that, or we, we were pretty confident that that was going to appeal 
to the hardcore players because once they learned the path, right. they could then bring their friends in and show them, and then we would have the videos, you yeah. know, with the walkthroughs, and it, it would just appeal to. Yeah. to As they let their friends people, go right? first that mm -hmm. first time to watch yeah. them fall off the yeah, edge yeah. helplessly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> also, too, is you know to kind of focus a little bit more on the art direction as well. Uh, I think to put it lightly, the the vibe in the whisper is pretty intense. Can you tell us what it was like, kind of imagining that space and bringing it to life? Yeah, well, we went, we wanted this like intense mystery vibe, right? The mystery of I'm on I'm on IO and I found this place that I've never seen, I didn't know existed. Yeah. And where does it go, right? And that mystery, and also the feeling of dread. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of that. yeah, and and it's easy to get a vibe if you listen to one type of music, for example. Right. So we were watching Stranger Things and listening to the soundtrack, and I got really into you know building this this traversal puzzle, it has a really consistent vibe because it was just one type of music that was listened to for the, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, speaks to my Hotline Miami fan yeah, yeah. inside, honestly. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, too, is we've got uh, another picture as well of the uh, the infamously titled Green Room as well. Um, there was a really cool anecdote you had kind of about the development process of this. What was it like bringing this kind of very iconic, I guess I'd say, Destiny Room to life? Yeah, well, this this is funny because there was this thing that we wanted to try, right? Mm -hmm. Make it Make a room that has a trap in the center that if you mess up, you end up going down the trap and you, you get punished for it. And yeah. when you get out, you end up back in the room. And it just happens again and again and again. And there's all these different ways that you try to find your way out of this room. Right. So the test was to make a tiny version of this, like one quarter scale. And we brought it into the play test lab. Yeah. We had Cosmo and Dylan. We had a bunch of our testers and designers in there. Yeah. And I just waited, right? And I waited to, for someone to find the hidden shortcut, right? Like what would happen when they, what's gonna happen when they find that hidden shortcut? Yeah. And so the first person that found it, they just screamed and started laughing and then everybody started finding it. And based on that reaction, we knew we had something good and then it got scaled up into what you see here and back to the vibe thing again. Yeah. When this got built, all I did was listen to Black Sabbath, the first six albums, like over and over. Yeah. <laughs> so it just has that really, really consistent vibe all the way through. And that's just a, a trick that the whole yeah. team uses to get uh, a theme yep. or a vibe oh, to right, be we have, consistent. We're going to go ahead also too and start jumping the activity so we can see this uh, this vibe up close and personal as well. But uh, here we are. We're we're back in the whisper as well. Uh, really quickly too, off the top, um, <clears throat> Willie. When it comes to you know bringing these encounters forward, bringing them to the modern era of Destiny, what were some of the bigger challenges that you'd say you have to overcome in order to make sure that they were fitting for today's sandbox? Yeah, so sandbox-wise, players nowadays pack a lot more power than they did before. Uh, people can clear entire rooms of ads from these activities back when uh, they were in their original state, Yeah, um, just like extremely quickly. So we had to beef up the number of combatants that are in these encounters, and uh, later on I might talk more about uh, additional tuning that I've done on them. Totally, yeah, yeah, we can come back to that in a second, but uh, I think also too, really quickly, you know, back in the day, there was a, a very bespoke way of getting into the Whisper. You had yeah. to kind of hang out on IO, wait for this mysterious portal to come up, yep. um, but we've, we've made some changes to that as well, I think you were mentioning before we hopped on the air. Oh yeah, I mean, I was a victim of it, right? We had the public event with the RNG, and you right. had to wait for the right one, and you know, yeah. one, one time I tried to take a coworker through on a Saturday, and yeah. we spent like seven hours just yeah. trying to get a few runs because of, because of the public event. And right. And that we just had to change that, right? Mm. And the team was excited about having a new, you know, benefactor, a new character that you you go and talk to. So you'll be talking to Eris Morn. Eris Morn is going to tell you some really cool stuff. I don't want to give it away. Smart. Yeah. But you know, you're not going to have to deal with the, the frustrating uh, trigger to get in anymore. Excellent. Mm -hmm. well, that's always good to hear. Giving a chance, especially you know, if people are going to come come back in here multiple times as yeah. they kind of build up their their craftable exotics. Obviously, a pretty key component. Uh, also, too, is you know I think it's it's worth mentioning that that this is this has undergone more changes than just the combat landscape. Yeah. Uh, for the veteran players who are coming in here, folks like myself that have mm -hmm. maybe kind of had a lot of this committed to memory, um, how have you gone ahead and made sure that it's fresh for those veteran guardians out there? Yeah. Well, the 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 goal was, how is this going to be exactly what you just said, right? Like if I if I've played this 10, 15, 20 times, I've guided people through. Maybe I've, I've made a video about how to get through here. Well, how's it gonna speak to me, right? Like right. what's gonna be cool for me to go in and do it again? And, and that was the goal that the team had. And it, when we knew we were gonna do this, I made my own list, right? Yeah. Like I was like, we're gonna change this, we're gonna move that, we're gonna, and I was really excited about it. Yeah. So, Tom, so Tom was in this meeting. So we, I show up and there's like you know, 15, 20 people mm -hmm. and they presented this whole plan 
and I had my list all ready to go and I was gonna wait. I was gonna listen to all the proposal and everything and then yeah. start giving <laughs> ideas and stuff. And when they finally finished presenting this plan for how to update this thing, I just deleted my list because it was like, <laughs> it was way bigger and way cooler than anything that I'd come up with. Yeah. It was just so neat to see like a fresh take on it. So if you think you know where the chests are, if you think you know where all the secrets are, if you think you know where all the surprises are, yeah. you don't because they're different. All those old guides and all the old walkthroughs, they're gonna have to be remade. Even though I'll just give one away, when you first get in, there's that first secret chest room on the right. Right. The anomaly has taken care of that. It's not there anymore. Anomaly has yeah. taken care of it. So more surprises. <laughs> to the to the Steam guide writers, to the game facts writers, to mm. the folks making their YouTube videos, a revision two is going to be in order sometime soon. Oh yeah. By the sounds of it. Yeah. That's really exciting. Uh, also, too, is is um, you know, are there any other changes that you guys are particularly excited about when it comes to the whisper? We're going to move on to zero hour here in a little bit, but um, you know, before we conclude our journey here, uh, Willie, actually on your side, are there any changes in particular that you're excited about with this this updated version? I'm excited about the way that the boss fight has changed yeah. for this activity. Interesting. All right, well, we'll leave that to folks to go ahead and discover on their own uh, when it comes to the launch day of, of The Whisper. But uh, <clears throat> yes, this is a first look uh, for the folks out there who are, are looking to go ahead and make sure that they, they're ready on day one to go ahead and add another craftable exotic into their, their collection. Uh, obviously, The Whisper is going to be there for you, but we don't want to spoil all of it. You'll have it in your hands soon enough. Uh, and also, some folks out there have already had a chance to play it, so we don't want to go ahead and uncover too many of the mysteries. Uh, up next, we've also got, obviously, another iconic one, Zero Hour. Uh, let's start from the top. Can you explain, uh, Rob, the concept behind Trevor? You've obviously gotten homage to him on your I have my I have my shirt, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a <laughs> yeah, little bit about what this original concept was? Uh, so, so Trevor was really inspired by this. There's this Japanese game show called Takeshi's Castle, and it's been around a while. And it's great because it has all these physical challenges and people getting knocked down or you know flipped over and stuff and mm -hmm. trying to get through things and and there's just a lot of comparisons to what we try to do in Destiny and we've we've borrowed from that show and shows like it for a long time for cool ideas and they have this one bit where the contestants try to get up this hill and there's this big fake boulder that comes down the hill <laughs> yeah right? and there's these little like side uh, rooms you know like little pockets that they right. can try to get into. And so we were like, man, if we had something like that in the middle of this mission, that would be amazing, yeah. right? Like, and so we had this thing that we called, we there it is. Yeah, we got some concept art up on the yeah. screen now. So we had this thing that we called the hazard for a long time. The hazard is going to get you, right? And it's going to come down at you. And on the left, you can see the original whiteboard drawing of what this could look like. <laughs> and there you see the hill with the slots. Yeah. We basically lifted off of Takeshi's castle. Yeah. And then that evolved into what we eventually made as a maze, yeah. right? And then there's the very first drawing of Trevor. And on the right, you can see a concept art by one of our artists named Fan Gao. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at it, it had a bit of a vacuum cleaner look. You know, it didn't quite nail the fear. Sure. You know, which, which yeah. we might talk about in a second here. Oh, yeah. So then on the far right, you can see the centipede legs and the light and the, the final revision. That's pretty close to how Trevor ended up. Yeah, yeah it definitely it, it feels terrifyingly familiar in some ways, we'll say. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, and, I, you know, kind of <laughs> while we're on the, other, the, the, the legs, <laughs> job, which uh, brings up, honestly, another great example I'd love to touch on as well is, um, you know, as, as a guardian myself, we've, we've felled gods. We've fought yeah. some of the most difficult battles in the universe, whether it's against our fellow guardian or, or the many foes that set foot inside the solar system. Uh, when it comes to Trevor in particular, it elicits a very primal, sincere fear. How did you guys kind of elicit that from players who have obviously conquered so much? Well, I think there's this like satisfaction from scaring people that's inherent in everybody. Like yeah. we've all scared somebody, I think at some point, it's just super fun, right? Yep. So what could, what could we do in Destiny to actually make people feel fear? And, and the team was super excited about how to try to tackle that problem. Because you're right, right? Like, Guardians can just jump away, and we kill everything, and we're just uh, gods. Invisible and dodge killers. away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To do it. Yeah. So how do you, how do you scare uh, our players in the game, right? So the first step was drop you in a maze. Yeah. Uh, there's something in there that you cannot kill. You can't jump mm -hmm. up because the ceiling is just above your, your head, right? Yeah. So those were the first three things. This thing is faster than you. Yeah. So you know you're in there with something that you can't kill that can go faster than you. And then of course we did the uh, centipede bottom, yeah. which I have this particular phobia of centipedes. Like 
The fact that you took something that is such a fear <laughs> and me, put it yeah. front and center, honestly, like it's yeah. commendable. I watched this video like a week ago where this this dude takes a giant centipede and lets it bite him on the arm. Why would you do that to your? I don't know. I almost passed out like watching this. Video. <laughs> so I, uh, centipedes terrify me. And so I thought the bottom of this thing just has to be sideways centipede legs that are made out of metal and they just grind you up when it catches you. Mm -hmm. And then the final piece of the, um, the formula for this thing really was to put a super bright light on it that would shine as a shadow caster across your, like past your body so you can see your own shadow as you're trying to get away. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like a lot of it was inspired by the anxiety that I feel and I think folks on the team also felt when we talked about like the trope of a subway that's coming around the corner. Right. Right. So you just, see that it's always, finite yeah. just clock running out it's in front coming. of you. It's coming. Yep. Yeah. You see the light coming and then you see the thing. Yeah. And so that really helped uh, us figure out how to make yeah. this thing as, as freaky as this possible. Time, no Indiana Jones laying down on the tracks hoping for the best here. Yeah, no. Not a chance, yeah, no. no. <laughs> Trevor's gonna chew you up, obviously. Uh, so also, we're, we found ourselves now, we're in the beginning stages here of the Whisper we can see on screen. Um, Willie, we kind of touched on this briefly over the course of, uh, of the Whisper, uh, but can you tell us a little bit about what it was like sort of reinventing these combat spaces and these encounters for Guardians in a modern sandbox, especially those that are gonna have the brave arsenal available to them? Yeah, so uh, just now you saw a brig in this encounter, uh, which there wasn't one before. Um, I think there's there's the desire to keep the, the soul of the activity, which is that, oh, there's time pressure um, on me to finish this activity quickly, and also I'm uh, going up against powerful enemies that are trying to stop me from doing that. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the combat still felt challenging even in today's sandbox, so we added some new combatants yeah. to the brig. Um, and we also just increased the number of combatants, period, yeah. um, so that players had more to do with their <laughs> more diverse and deadly tools. Yeah. <clears throat> Guardians have plenty of those available to them. Uh, when you were developing these combat spaces as well, were there any moments where you really thought to yourself, like, all right, this is it. Like, we've really centered in on what was great about this mission originally, but this is going to be appropriately challenging for today's Guardians. Yeah, I think the when we when we play tested it and uh, you know we had everybody load up with uh, their like new maneuverability tools, mm -hmm. their swords, their grapples mm -hmm. uh, to go through the activity, and then we were expecting that like oh people are going to breeze through this like it's nothing like the original 20 minute timer has to uh, become something else, but really all of that translated over pretty well. Like the individual yeah. sections are uh, self-contained enough that like you can't. Uh, bypass too many things by just using one new tool. Sure. Um, the whole thing sort of still felt like zero hour, yeah. even with your new toolbox. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Even even with, uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump forward here a little bit as well, using our dev tools to take a look at Trevor as well. So for the folks out there that want to reinstill that fear in themselves, now's a brief chance to check it out. Uh, also, too, is we're in a world where, you know, there's strand grapples, there's shatter skating. Uh, when it came to kind of redesigning these activities or even making, I guess, alterations more appropriately on these activities, um, you know, with one like Trevor, for example, what was the challenge that you kind of had to overcome with those new movement tools in addition to the combat tools that players have available to them? Yeah, I guess uh, philosophically, I want to make sure that if people were specking into being highly maneuverable, then I honor that choice and say, yeah, you're highly maneuverable. Like maybe you're in this hallway with Trevor. Uh, I don't want to be ground up by these centipede legs, <laughs> so I'm going to sword skate through this so that I can have a little bit of speed on Trevor. Um, but like, you know, you still can't invalidate the challenge entirely. Trevor will still kill you if you mistime those. Mm. So they're just like different expressions of how you want to tackle these challenges, and none of those expressions like fully throw these challenges out the window. Yeah, actually something too that I'm seeing pop up in chat here uh, is the mention of the timer. So for starters, there's also, this is normal difficulty yes. in the social legend, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about like any updates to the timers in these missions as well? So, uh, and Willie, feel free to have him correct me if I'm wrong, but on normal, it's 40 minutes because we want to give players a little bit extra time, especially sure. if you're new, you want this to be accessible, everyone would get in there and get the, 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 the experience. But a lot of our kind of like, uh, like quests, content, and secrets are in the legend version, which has a 20 minute timer. Yes. Right? Yep. Interesting. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you, chat. Uh, in addition to you know these these other updates you've made, 
Are there anything or any any changes you've made in particular that you're excited about that you're comfortable talking about it here, or is it just a, you want players to dive in and find out for themselves? Yeah, the so the whole secret setup for Zero Hour is different. Um, so you know, previously we had key cards; those have been replaced by another secret system that you'll just have to find out more about for Perfect. yourself. <laughs> and you know, I'm also proud of the boss fight in this That's activity. right, yeah. We'll hold that one close to the vest. Players will have a chance mm -hmm. to see that on their own and see Willie's hard work uh, in person very soon. Uh, now, as we mentioned at the top of the show as well, there's going to be craftable versions of these exotics, and we're going to check them out. But there was one more example uh, that I wanted to ask you about, Rob, in particular. Uh, there was some discussion briefly about the acronym that is Trevor. Can you tell us what that stands for? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, but yeah. I, had to, I had to open my phone because it's like impossible to remember this. <laughs> it, we, got, we all have our yeah. notes. Yeah, it's part of the game. <clears throat> so, yeah. So early on, the team we re we, re we just realized we had to figure out an acronym for this because we loved the name Trevor because it was paradoxical. Mm -hmm. I went to school with a kid named Trevor who was the nicest kid in the entire school, <laughs> just nice to everybody to yeah. a fault, right? So I always thought like Trevor is just the nicest name, and so paradoxically, here's this evil thing named Trevor, and we thought it was hilarious. <laughs> But Sorry. once we alphanumericized, is that a word? Yeah. Once we made that, we had to come up with the acronym. So the one that I had was Tracking Robotic Three-Vectored Reducer. Because <laughs> it reduces, right, Tom? It's like it reduces you, yeah. Uh, but that was our internal acronym. Yeah. And so when we went to GuardianCon and did, we did like a, a fly-through or like a walk-through, yeah. um, and so we, uh, the community team uh, thought that we should let the fans of Guardian Con yeah. decide what the actual acronym for Trevor was. And so we had like the five different examples and my tracking robotic was in there. Oh right? yeah. One of the things, I was like, please pick <clears throat> mine, please pick mine. Yeah. And so at the end, <clears throat> what they decided on, and they decided by loud applause and it was like very obvious ah, this is what they wanted. The committee had Oh yeah, it's like very obvious. Yeah. What they decided on was Tame Relaxed Triple Vac Roommate. <laughs> so that's the official name for Trevor. That's it, it's codified. Acronym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... yeah. Thank you very much the, the, to the denizens of GCX. Thank you very much for your hard work and letting us know uh, exactly what yeah. Trevor should be called. That's, that's really cool. I wish I'd been there for that. Uh, nice. Okay, now we're taking a quick look uh, at the craftable exotics as well. We're going to go ahead and start with Whisper of the Worm. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about what you know players who are kind of going to go ahead and facilitate their own play style or want to build a Whisper all to their own, what are they going to have to look forward to with all this? Yeah, even before we get into the, the crafting, like, like I've got my notes here from Chris Proctor. So You're the I'm man himself. Grow. Yeah, he's right. sitting on my shoulder, helping me out here. Um, and we wanted to retain the, the fantasy of both these weapons, of both of Whisper and of Outbreak. And, and you know, Whisper, it's, about, it's a hard-hitting precision weapon where you're in yeah. the backfield. Like, and if you land your crits, you're rewarded, and you can sustain a ton of damage on a, on a boss or enemies with a large critical area. Ogres will be felled. O ogres will be felled. The servitors stand Oh, don't say a chance, yeah. <laughs> um, and then with Outbreak, it's the fantasy is all about spreading the, the plague of S Siva nanites. Certainly. Um, and we'll be able to get to that in a, in a minute. But I think we're looking at Whisper right now. Yeah, so specifically with Whisper um, and, and Outbreak, for both of them, with both these crafted weapons, they'll both have a, a craftable barrel, uh, magazine, traits, and stock options. Um, the barrel and magazine options will let you like really push the stats around. Mm -hmm. um, like so, you'll be able to have like a max stability whisper if you want. Uh, yeah. Um, which was like you know really advantageous for a weapon that's about this like hitting repeated critical hits. Certainly. Uh, in an area, um, and then specifically for the perks on whisper and the, both the perks on whisper and outbreak are things that by engaging in our secrets week over week and and both of these exotic missions, uh, you'll be able to unlock them. Um, and Whisper, it starts off with Mulligan, uh, which is the, the classic perk where if you miss your shots, they get refunded. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, upgrade it, you can get field prep, which will give you more shots, which equals more damage. Yeah. Uh, and then there's no distractions, which will allow you to you know, uh, keep uh, under, under fire, hold your aim on your target better. Exactly. And there's also enlightened action, which is for more forgiving reloads. So there's, I think, a lot of options for players of different play styles and different skill levels Perfect. there. Yeah. Um, and then just the kind of the cherry on top there with Whisper is that it's getting a reserves bump. So it's going to go from oh, that's right. 18 
uh, in reserve to 24 in reserve. Uh, so you're going to have a ton of ammo to be, just like make it a sustained damage monster, yeah. uh, which is, is, is super exciting. So ultra precise players like myself who never miss a shot <laughs> will have even more. Why are you guys laughing? Why, do you, what's, <laughs> what's Sorry. That, why is that funny? Uh, no, that's really exciting. We also, so we have Whisper of the Worm yep. uh, in addition to Outbreak Perfected now joining yep. the pool of craftable exotic weapons. Uh, let's take a quick look at Outbreak as well while we're here hanging out in the Enclave. Um, Tom, kind of, you know, second verse, same as the first, same question. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the perks and updates that players will have available to them with uh, their options to, to craft Outbreak Perfected? Yep, and so in addition to barrels and mags, it has uh, its, its classic outlaw perk is back. So you get your fast reloads on final blows, which works which really well about yeah. without break. It's all about also landing precision hits to, 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 to either uh, spawn nanites or to kill enemies and spawn nanites and spread that SIVA energy yeah. around. Spread the plague. Spread the plague. Um, and then the, the second one though that we've at, we're added here is rapid hit, which plays right into that. So like you, sure. you land your precision shots, you get more stability, you get faster reloads. Uh, then another new one is rewind, uh, re uh, rewind rounds. It's hard for me to say. Fast, yeah. yeah, try it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, which refills your reserves from uh, it, it, to minimize your reload. So, like, if you're hitting shots, you're just going to keep getting more ammo, which yeah. is really a kind of interesting. Uh, perpetual motion machine? No, perpetual yeah. death machine. So yeah, it's like, do you want? Yeah, do you want the reloads? Or you just want to keep shooting. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a head seeker, which I think maybe for PvP or for certain for certain play styles, where like you're, you're less you know focused on your critical shots. That's that's something to think about as well. Right. Um, in terms of catalysts. Um, if you already have them, yeah. you're golden. You can craft those. If you don't, you play the legend version of Whisper and Zero Hour, and you'll have a chance to get them. Very cool. So that's still in there. And then, as I mentioned, for unlocking these these new intrinsic perks that you can slot in, yeah. there'll be like a three week uh, mini quest line that rolls into the secrets for each of these. And Whisper is coming at launch with Into the Light. Exciting. And Zero Hour is coming in May. Perfect, okay. So yeah. it'll be a chance to go ahead and sink your teeth into Zero Hour for a while before you go ahead and change your attention and start unlocking another, another uh, one of the, the storied exotics of old. Yeah. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that there are more than just the craftable weapons available as rewards in these missions. There's some tried and true ships. Now, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but as someone who still to this day wears a thousand wings. You and me. Yeah, yeah like yeah. We, we, we know the feeling of getting that <laughs> ship and finally having that I was there moment. Uh, the ships are making a return as well, isn't that correct? Yeah. Okay, so for, for both Whisper and for Zero Hour, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're coming back. Is it the exact same ship, or are there going to be changes on them? No, these are actually new assets, right? They're, they're new ships, so yeah. they won't be the same. They won't, they won't sit in the same spot in your inventory. Mm. And they are updated to look really cool and new. And I think they're exciting, especially the, we took the old scrap drifter ship that yeah. was, <clears throat> I think... Uh, not really loved particularly by the community because <laughs> yeah. it was it was literally scrapped together from spare parts to right. get built, and so we did a really nice pass on that. So it um, it's inspired by the look of Outbreak Perfected, and I, I think it looks great. I think the community is going to love it. Yeah. And then we have the Whisper Ship a Thousand Wings. Uh, it's got a new design, uh, so you'll still have your old Thousand Wings, mm -hmm. and. If you have that equipped, players are going to know that you're OG and that mm -hmm. you got it back in the day. Oh, yeah. And the new one is going to look like the new one, so there won't be any mistaking the old one for the new one. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So for the players who want to go ahead and continue to build up their collections, yeah. there's a chance to go ahead and dive back in. Yeah. Maybe they weren't there originally, but they yeah. want to go ahead and join the Thousand Wings Club to a degree. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> so there'll be a chance to go ahead and unlock those, uh, unlock those as well. Um, Excellent. Well, I think we are actually about at the point of the show. We're going to go ahead and get ready to rotate over to the PvP map pack. But for starters, let's go ahead and make sure we thank our incredible team of playtesters here, uh, going ahead and showing off the missions for us. Ashley, Peyton, and Michael, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, very much. There we go. We're getting some waves from the backstage. Uh, <clears throat> thank you all so much for the time. And of course, uh, Willie. I think this is unfortunately the time. Now we bid you adieu to go ahead and transition into thank the uh, the you. PvP Thanks map. For having See me. you soon. Awesome, Willie. Thank you so much. All right, we are now uh, joined by another member of the Bungie development team, a staff artist here who has helped made many of the PvP maps that you've also known and loved, the one and only Mr. Cooley Callahan. Cooley, welcome to the show, man. Guys. How's it going? <clears throat> Good to see you. Thanks for having me Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's been so long. Uh, yeah. yeah, it has. It's been a minute. Look at us, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, full circle. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking a little bit before the show about Cooley. I'm going to go ahead and do us all a favor and put Cooley on the spot to a degree. Rob, we were talking a bit about Cooley's history. We were. Here. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the man sitting just to your left, the contributions he's made to the PvP pantheon? Yeah, well, one of the things that was really important for us was to make sure that the strike team was stacked. 
that we had the best designers on the strike team. Mm -hmm. And so Cooley is certainly one of those. He's a six-year veteran of the PvP team who shipped over 11 maps. Yeah. A lot of them are fan favorites, and I'm not going to steal any more Cooley's thunder. I'll just let him talk <laughs> yeah. about some of that. Yeah, it's uh, not, not everyone's a banger. I mean, there's definitely some maps <laughs> that people would want some words with me. Uh, but I <laughs> We'll think, save that for later, but what, what are yeah, some of the bangers? Come, come find me. Uh, it's, um, I think, you know, uh, Burning Shrine, yeah. uh, which is now Burnout, you know, it's such a classic map. It's um, a trial's favorite. And then Midtown is another map that turned out really well. We built that for Countdown, but um, you know, I was just chatting with another Destiny fan at the dog park the other day, talking about how well that map supports all of the different uh, engagement ranges, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely something that we try to do. We try to create places for players to use their their favorite tools. Yeah. Now with the the maps, we're going to be looking at three of them today with kind of a, a primary focus on, you were mentioning earlier, I think it was the 3v3 kind of competitive side of things was sort of a focus for these maps. Absolutely. Yeah. I think early on, um, a lot of the direction that we got was we wanted to bolster that competitive uh, gameplay experience um, with new maps, tweaks to the modifiers of some of the modes. And so we, in our play testing, really focused on the competitive playlist and uh, really centered and put those uh, experiences at the forefront. Um, and then, you know, all Destiny maps, you know, can, can suit a variety of modes. So we also made sure they worked elsewhere. But for the most part, yeah. we really did want to provide um, new experiences and just breathe a little bit of new life into the higher, yeah. maybe a little bit sweatier uh, <laughs> gameplay. So you, know, you yeah. were staring directly at me when you said sweaty, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, pretty, we'll, we'll let it go for now. Uh, you know, actually, uh, briefly too on that topic before we kind of go into the guided tour of these maps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having had so much time to sort of be a part of building the the you know, the tapestry that so much of our PvP happens on, what were some of the key lessons that you've kind of taken away from having built those maps and seen them go through everything from trials to quick play and and mm -hmm. you know bringing forward those lessons into these maps yeah i think one thing that is always at the forefront of our minds is um you know trying to strike that balance between you know providing the playground for players to express themselves and express their guardian and their play style mm -hmm. so a lot of verticality a lot of movement um and then so and then balancing that with making sure players understand where they're getting shot from and you know creating a satisfying pvp engagement that doesn't um that doesn't leave players, you know, cursing the map or, sure. um, you know, feeling like they they don't understand why they died. So yeah. we want to make sure that players have, um, you know, the the we want to provide a choice for players that's you know always available to them to mm -hmm. um, to riff and to work with their team to you know use the map to their advantage. So yeah. it's a it's a balancing like a complex gameplay space um, that allows a lot of movement and freedom with without you know. Um, opening it up so much that you're not understanding, like, geez, I can get shot from so many different places. Certainly. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we really, um, it's, a, it's a little bit of back and forth. We'll, we'll open it up, we'll try some things. Yeah. Um, especially this time around, we, we tried some stuff and, and got into the weeds a little bit. Yeah. But um, I think that's all part of the discovery process of finding, of finding the gameplay that we want to create. And so we go a little further, maybe too far in the, in the openness and Swiss cheese, and then um, we bring it back and, and make it a little bit more focused and really dial in the, the engagements that we want. That's awesome. I mean, speaking of getting in the weeds, there's, there's no time like the present. Uh, shall, yeah. shall we go ahead and dive on in? Absolutely. Excellent. Cool. Diving on in. Uh, all right, we got the first of three maps to go ahead and show off. This is the, uh, we, have, we have one on Europa, one on Neomuna, and then one on one of the pyramid ships in Essence, I believe is That's the name right. of the location. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first one. This is here on Europa. Uh, Cooley, can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here today or where we are? Yes, so this map is called Eventide Labs, and this is a long forgotten human colony research outpost on Europa. Five um, minutes left. And, Keep it uh, up. It just so happens that Aramis has chosen this location as a refueling station for her catch. So here you'll see, um, you know, perched just above the horizon is her catch in the in the in the sky box with, you know, it's getting it hooked up, and um, we have a servitor over here that's um, hooked up to the catch to provide that ether that the elixir need. Um, and so we really wanted to situate the maps in the universe and you know draw on that deep destiny lore. Um, but yeah, we definitely have. Um, a presence of fallen here, set amongst the um, abandoned human, uh, you know, ice encrusted structures of the past, which has been a really fun, um, 
environment to work on. We definitely want to bring in as many new palettes as possible because you know there's so much great um, environment art content. The palettes are are really cool, and we want to we want to use those in in PvP wherever we can. Just to you know, the different palettes have different character that yeah. leads to different gameplay spaces. Uh, also, you know, when it comes to kind of finding these maps to place in the world, Rob, uh, you know, having kind of looking at through these through an artistic lens, uh, what were some of the challenges or even kind of exciting opportunities potentially of finding, you know, new places for these maps to live in the more modern era of Destiny that we've been experiencing more recently? Well, we really wanted to make sure that when we do an update like this, you know, it's it's a major refresh to the to the map rotator, right? Mm -hmm. Like we were adding quite a bit of variety here. We wanted to make sure that we had three distinctly different places and places that players haven't seen a bunch of times. So right. fortunately, we had these uh, available to us. And I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at it again now. I mean, I, I'm not getting sick of looking at this. The team does such a good job. It's gorgeous. <laughs> this is, I mean, one of the cool things is just how purposeful everything feels in the world. You know, yeah. like the art team always pushes it so far where it really feels like you're walking into a truly recently defunct, mm -hmm. you know, human colony or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and the frozen world of Europa, I mean, they all they all have their advantages for, for PvP, but uh, the the frozen ice walls of Europa are just perfect for yeah. multiplayer, and I'm sure Cooley's going to talk about this a bunch. Yeah, actually, also to Cooley, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, uh, you know, I as as people who have heard me talk too much about Destiny PvP would know, Dead Man's Tale and I get along a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit maybe about some of the sight lines or opportunities that I'll have to maybe rack up some additional kills as I dive into this map the first time? Totally, totally. If if long range is your thing, um, this spot out here is definitely the place for you. Um, there's one spawn that happens uh, for uh, one team over by C and then one over by A. And so in these competitive modes, if you've got an objective out here, this sight line is really important to lock down. So this is the like, this is a spot where you're gonna have two teams poking uh, and peeking each other. Um, and then, you know, rushing over here to try to get to this, this zone and lock it down. And yeah. um, if you're, you know, rolling with that, that long range kit, you can hang back and sort of lock down this airspace here so that you can provide cover and, and maybe support your team from being uh, harassed down on this point. God, this and then fantastic. we also have sort of this uh, the sight line in the middle, which will be pretty fun. It's definitely gonna be a race to um, for each player uh, or each team to kind of get to this spot and, and lock down the this sort of uh, portal here to ensure that you can uh, push into this space and kind of control the middle. But um, as you can see, there's, you know, lots of ways for players to come in and flank. So if you're holding the space, you'll really not want to be here for too long unless you've got the support to do it. Yeah. Um, Make sure you throw those grenade, grenades right off of the rip, basically, mm -hmm. when you're coming out of spawn to try and yep. conquer that territory as best you can. Yeah, one of the things I love about these ice caves is, um, you know, it provides a lot of opportunity for grenades, like trip mines, and to bounce things off of the, the back of the, of the walls. And the, the shapes here are just really fun to, to play with. Awesome. All right, so this is uh, one of three maps. Let's go ahead and prepare to go ahead and move on to the next one here really quickly. We've got uh, coming up next, Neomuna uh, as well. So finding a place you know, on Neomuna, obviously, that that's, makes sense for PvP probably seems pretty natural, honestly, given just like how rich and vibrant and exciting of a place it is. Uh, what was it like you know, even starting from an artistic standpoint on this map, Rob? This was a really exciting map for the team. Um, it's a shopping slash entertainment center for the Exos on Neomuna. And, yeah. um, you know, so there's a lot of really fun uh, decoration and the spaces have a lot of character to them. There's a lot of recognizable things, um, you know, human scale things that, you know, look relatable. And yeah. we don't always get that in, in all of our palettes. And so um, this is also an opportunity for us to have a really clean architectural mm. map that has a lot of um, you know, crisp edges and, um, you know, very uh, flat floors. So all of the, definitely the more competitive players and the sort of the more PvP uh, diehards, um, they really take to this map and it's an instant hit. Um, people are, you know, just right away pleased with, you know, how readable the map is. It's one of those maps that you play a couple times and you're, you, you get it, like you understand that it's all about this the center atrium room that is really open and kind of you know has this big pit in the middle and then yeah. um, there's this area down here which is uh, where a lot of objectives spawn and there's um, some special ammo down here but then there's also um, this place over here where the, the heavy ammo spawns yep. and you know players will 
oftentimes just pop up here to do a quick check and, and maybe like try to get a, a cheeky kill on somebody who's maybe running uh, from cover to cover. But yeah. you can't hang out here for very long because you've got so many different angles at which you can um, get shot from. But that's that's kind of like that balance of what I was talking about before. Like we, we want to provide that, but we want to make sure that um, it's not too powerful or um, you know, it's, it's still, it's a risk reward, right? You're making a trade off and um, you know, the, the players who are using the map well and who understand the map will um, you know, be able to use it to their advantage. Yeah, actually also too, to kind of focus on the readability. Uh, I remember overhearing some discussions with, with you designers talking about the clean zone in PVP. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and how it kind of helped inform the design of this map? Yeah, definitely. I think the the clean zone is something that you know a lot of um, a lot of developers uh, really use to um, sort of create this space for uh, uh, the player to pop, right? To like really stand out from the environment. And so for us, it's about where the player's head height is. And this map is, you know, just one of the examples of how it, it can really provide for a good PvP experience to um, have this sort of mark on the wall where you can kind of expect players to, to reside in. Yeah. Um, Till they jump around and, and strand suspend you in the air and you're just left right. there cursing <laughs> the heavens for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Maybe I'm speaking on my own behalf. <laughs> uh, this is this is looking fantastic. Yeah, this is, I will say, one of the maps that having done a little bit of playtesting myself, um, I still have to give you credit for perhaps one of the most diabolical heavy weapon spawns, uh, or heavy <laughs> ammo spawns, rather, I should see, uh, in any PvP map. Like, the sheer amount of risk-reward that goes into just making your way safely, or so you think, out to that particular territory. Right. Um, you know, as you guys were even building that balance in of these consumables on the map, Cooley, what was it like sort of having that, that process evolve or, or grow? Yeah. Um, you know, typically when we start laying out a map, we, we just kind of start with control because it's a it's a good base point. It's it requires three, you know, very well defined combat pockets that have an objective in them. Um, but then from there, we start mapping out the other objectives that might exist on a map, like the heavy ammo point. And I think we've kind of gravitated more toward having special ammo live next to some of the other objectives on the map. So you're not constantly having to make a choice of where, where should I go? Um, but we, we kind of map those things out and um, it's, it's sort of a formula. There's, there's definitely a um, sort of a order of operations, so to speak, of you start with you know, these big strokes, um, you go to the next stage and, and start making sure that you've got you know, space and combat pockets for you know, maybe Dominion or you know, some, some other game modes and um, things just kind of fall into place from there. Excellent. All right. And we've also got, we've got one more map to check out as well uh, for all the fine folks at home. We're going to continue our guided tour and we're going to make our way over to Essence, to one of the pyramid ships, to check out the final PvP map that will be releasing in this pack. Uh, as we're flying in, I, I got I to give you guys credit. Like The space that exists inside those pyramid ships that's being terraformed by the Traveler looks just absolutely incredible. But this is the first time you guys have had a chance to really flex your muscles and build a PvP map out here. Um, you know, Rob, just to start from your perspective as we load in, <clears throat> what was it like developing this you know, playground for Guardians that's kind of so deep in the enemy's backyard? I think it was really tough. You yeah. know? Like the, I remember there were quite a few iterations of this map, and I know Cooley's going to go into more detail, but like from a high level, it's a, a pretty inherently noisy palette. You know, Cooley was talking about the clean zone. Mm. There's some palettes in the game that are that are just very visually noisy. So the geometry is noisy. They create a lot of shadow and a lot of highlights just yeah. by the geometry itself. And then the textures, the shaders that are on the geometry, those can be noisy. Yeah. And then there's the clutter of the palette. So when you when you have uh, an environment with a lot of entropy and there's just mm -hmm. rubble everywhere, there's like garbage strewn around or, or plants hanging down, right. like we, we often do in Destiny, we have to declutter. Some of like the European <laughs> dead, dead zone maps, for example, yeah. are highly cluttered. And so. This was an example of one of those um, fairly entropic, high clutter palettes yeah. that the team had to kind of wrangle into shape. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm sure Cooley's going to talk about that process because it was quite a process. Yeah, actually, yeah, Cooley, I'd love to g continue and just start there. You know, taking this space on a pyramid ship and kind of making it suitable for a PvP map. What was what was that process like from your perspective, kind of from more of a design side? Yeah, it's it's again it, a process of back and forth. Um, you know, we start with Mass Out, and Mass Out is the simplest and cleanest a map will ever be. And uh, you know, from there we start 
um, developing the spatial character of, of the map. And one of the things we like to ask ourselves is, what is this place? And even with um, a more abstract palette like um, the Essence ship, um, it's, it's worth asking that question because we can leverage spatial archetypes that just kind of like naturally resonate with people. So um, like here we have in this map, we have sort of these dueling huts or these yeah. dueling, dueling ziggurats. And inside of them is this artifact or shrine. So maybe this is like a, maybe this part of the ship is a, a collection of mysterious artifacts that the witness has collected. Um, and so we, we lean on those things to, to give a little bit of rhyme and reason to a space that otherwise is completely abstract. Um, and that, that is also really useful for us in terms of we can make any, any kind of space we want. Like we're not limited by architectural constraints, but um, you know, it, can be, it can be tough sometimes to, to orient pay, players in the map um, when you don't have things like doors or you know, <laughs> like TVs or, or um, you know, any sort of you know, human scale architectural pieces that um, kind of clue you in. So, yeah. yeah. It's also too is uh, yeah, I remember we were talking a little bit before the show, Rob, even about you know what it was like from a design standpoint and bringing in external testers to try these maps uh -huh. out for the first time. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and kind of as you I think phrased it, discovering your own blind spots? Yeah, well we've done this before for years really, and yeah. we did it again here, and it was I think really successful because you know it was two days they ran through these maps when they were still in development. They yeah. weren't too far enough along where we couldn't make some some pivots that we needed to. Yeah. And they found a lot of stuff. I mean, we for this map, for example, we thought it was in a pretty good place. Yeah. And and a lot of things were called out. They didn't pull any punches. They were honest and clear and, and constructive with the feedback. And yeah. it wasn't super easy to hear at all. But sure. You know, when the when the team listened to it and we we took tons of notes. And it was also about. I mean, they gave feedback on, on our sandbox as well. Yeah. But <clears throat> lots and lots of map feedback. It was incredibly useful. And, you know, just another lesson in what we don't see. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just, it's so valuable to do that. And these, I can't say who they were, but they're very well known community yeah. players. There's folks in chat who knows. But <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, you know we, you we really were careful about who we brought in because we wanted people that would be very pragmatic. Mm. You know, they weren't interested in their own, you know, YouTube monetization strategy or how, how they particularly make content. They wanted the game to be in a great place. They wanted PvP to be in a great place for, for the community and for Destiny. Absolutely. Right? And so, and they were carefully selected that way and great communicators who could articulate the feedback. They could really speak to what they were experiencing and, yeah. and what we could do to fix what they were experiencing. Yeah. yeah. And man, I'd like, Cooley can, can probably um, say what he thinks about it too, but yeah. I was just blown away by yeah. How valuable that was, and uh, we definitely want to keep doing that. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah Cooley, can you tell us a little bit more yeah. about that experience on your side as well? Totally. I mean, it's so fun to, like, those are some of my favorite moments when we can get a bunch of, um, you know, super fans from the community in and show them work in progress stuff, and they can actually give us real actionable feedback that we take back to the, back to our desks and talk about it, and we, you know, we, we discuss how can we, um, you know, sort of take their feedback and move forward. And um, this is this content is for them in, yeah. in, a, in a big way, right? Like we want, we need their approval. Like we we absolutely, you know, that's our that's our that's our mark. That's our our goal is to um, you know create content that they're going to love playing and that they're excited to play and that their communities are going to get excited to play and and sort of learn together and, and build strategies for. Um, you know, that's. That's the funnest part of the job. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, Cooley on on your side in general, what are you most excited for for players to experience once this gets out into the world with Into the Light? Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see these maps rotate into trials. I'm excited for players to have a totally new trials experience that, you know, is going to be uh, a sort of a an experience of discovery of of these new spaces and, and new strategies and. Um, for players to also, you know, the the meta of isn't really formed yet. I mean, like we 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 sort of know how the map plays, but it's always a, a fun surprise to see in the wild um, just how the map ends up uh, sorting out and and what people end up doing. And um, you know, we're we're really looking forward to just watching what happens. Yeah. I mean, I, I count myself among the many that are excited to go ahead and dive on in, having more playgrounds to go ahead and dive on in on trials, no matter what the case is, to maybe try and go ahead and actually get some more competitive rank. Uh, Cooley, thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through these today. We really appreciate it. Anytime. My pleasure.
Excellent. And uh, all right, well, we'll go ahead and use that as a moment to conclude the uh, the quick tour of as well of the PVP maps. Uh, we got a quick question from chat from Jake Asor asking about, uh, are we going to get a playlist or mode? It'll be just these new maps during Into the Light. And the answer is yes. When they launch on May 7th, we'll have a 3v3 playlist to go ahead and talk just about these items. Uh, I'd rather let you play just those maps. Rather, we're talking about them today. <laughs> They're all going to be playing them very shortly. Uh, all right. Well, that uh, so far wraps up the first two segments of our show. But we've got, as I mentioned at the top, a few more announcements for you as well. So you may have heard us mention the word Pantheon in the TWID last week, uh, or even on the show here last week potentially as well. We have got a brand new uh, raid-oriented, a raid boss gauntlet, rather, starting on April 30th. Now, there will be more information about this in an upcoming TWID. You'll have more details to dig into shortly, but you will have the Pantheon coming up, where you'll have an opportunity to face grueling raid bosses in a weekly challenge with escalating difficulties and rewards. Now, this is a chance for you to go ahead and rally your clan or the perfect fire team with Fire Team Finder, if you're able to track them down, to go ahead and track down those exotics, adept weapons, any emblems you may not have gotten your hands on. But we have more details for that in the coming weeks. Keep an eye on the TWID, Cosmo, and the community team. Thank you for your hard work putting that together. Two, uh, when you dive on in on, uh, on April 9th, uh, actually, rather, before we get there, I'm sorry, we will have the opportunity to also, you'll have the opportunity to get a title through your course of Into the Light as well. So if you dive on in, go ahead and unlock all the triumphs associated with the seal, you'll be able to march into the final shape with a brand new title, Brave, as well. So make sure, go ahead and get those, those big challenges bit off, so that way you can handle them uh, as early as you possibly can and let the witness know that you're on the way. Uh, and we have three really, really cool things hitting on f April 9th when Into the Light launches. The first one is, if you're a new player, you got a buddy who's just jumping into the game for the first time, and you'd rather not hang out with Shahan and the Cosmodrome, then you have an opportunity to go ahead and just join the front line. If you can skip the New Light campaign, give Shahan maybe a high five on the way out, ask him for a weekly bounty when you're back later, but you have a chance to go ahead and meet up with your friends, head to the Hall of Champions, grab the Gift of the Thunder Lords if you so choose, and get right ready for battle along alongside them. So you'll be able to go ahead and grab some of these new light kits as well, depending on what your subclass of choice is out of the gate. But your barriers to dive in with your friends have never been lower. There'll be a chance to go ahead and dive on into everything you're seeing within the light here. Uh, also, we have a couple more things. We have some questions in chat about this as well uh, from it's Zepsky and Atlas Live TV. But on 4.9, you'll have the opportunity to also change your, what, the way your character looks. So uh, you'll be able to go ahead and change your hair if you didn't like your haircut, if you want to go ahead and change your face paint, if you want to go ahead and risk it to be one of those guardians who goes helmetless in the tower. I'm not sure if I'm brave enough, but I know many of you are. Your chance will be arriving very soon with Into the Light. Uh, and there will also be an opportunity to change your name. So Guardian4681 out there. With the launch of Into the Light, we're also going to give you one more name change token. If you already have your sitting around, I believe you have two, but our friends in DPS will be able to answer that question for you. But you'll have that chance as well once Into the Light launches. <sighs> now, there's a lot, but we also have one more thing for all of you. Uh, next week, we're going to be joining you again for a special developer preview of some gameplay for Destiny 2 The Final Shape. Mm -hmm. It'll be uh, here, wherever you're watching live, you'll be able to go ahead and watch it on April 9th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, uh, where you'll get a chance to basically, again, get a look behind the scenes. The developers have been hard at work for some mm -hmm. cool stuff that you are definitely not going to want to miss. And over the course of that show, Twitch drops will be live. So they'll have, there'll be another emblem, which you can see here live on the screen, that'll be available uh, after about 15 minutes of view time. Uh, if you haven't gone ahead and also unlocked the emblems that you got as a result of this show or that we're, we're having available during the Into the Light streams, then you have a chance to go ahead and spend some more time unlocking those as well. Uh, but uh, that, that does it. Um, for starters, to all of you Guardians out there in chat, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We're thrilled about what we've been able to show off and thrilled about what the teams are working on for Into the Light. So thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, chat, we see you out there having a good time. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, also, it goes without saying, but we'll go ahead and do so anyway to the incredible team here at Bungie, building Into the Light, making all of this. Uh, the teams that you guys have been kind enough to represent, thank you all so much for all of your hard work. Uh, we're nothing without the entire teams that we have here. Teams are obviously greater than heroes and we're firm believers in that. And you're all great examples uh, of, of that whole scenario. Uh, to our play testers as well that have helped us bring this show to life, to Ashley Payton and Michael here behind the scenes, uh, thank you so much for, for showing off some of the cool new content. And of course, all of our guests, to Tom, to Rob, to Cooley, to Willie, to Noah, to Kelsey. Uh, I'm not forgetting anyone, am I? Chris. To Chris, thank you. To the one and yes. only Mr. Chris Proctor as well. <laughs> um, thank you all for joining us. 
Uh, and now that's, uh, that is about it. So we're gonna keep the stream here live until about 11.30, I believe, so you can go ahead and get a little bit more time racking up the last bits of those emblems. But in the meantime, that's it for all of us here at Bungie. Oh, also, I'm sorry, to the team of producers here, yeah. everyone here Thank that you. makes this show possible, uh, they have the challenge of making me look good on camera, so obviously their work is cut out for them. Thank you all so much for helping bring this show to life. Uh, and now, finally, we're gonna go ahead and sign off and reminder into the light launches next week. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you all star side. <laughs>